Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My apologies for starting late. We had a ran late this morning. During the declared emergency in the City of Toronto, Committee of Adjustment virtual public hearings are being conducted by electronic means through WebEx, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. These measures are necessary to comply with physical distancing requirements and in-person attendance limitations. This will be a virtual public hearing and participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx, an online event that is being moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may do so by watching it on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting either by their computer, a phone or tablet app, or by telephone. All participants are automatically muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator, one person at a time. Only the committee members will be participating by video. Any registered participants will be participating by audio only. We ask that you also mute your devices until you are called on to speak. For all those who are waiting online, please ensure that you have called in with the phone number that you were originally registered with. If you call in with a different number, you will not be able to speak on that item. To ensure audio clarity, I suggest that you do not use the speakerphone function on your telephones. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto was covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto was called to order. My name is Alan Smithies and I will chair today's meeting. Joining us on the panel today are Ron Hunt, Paul Kidd and Adini Sankar Peralta. City staff are also present, Daniel Antonacci, Adam Wills and Kelly Reed. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaw that apply to property, permission to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consent to sever property to create new lots. Anyone attending today who wants to receive a copy of the Committee's decision must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because Committee of Adjustment and the T-Lab will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, it may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body, TLAB, or in some limited circumstances to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal, LPAT. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the committee's decision. The hearing procedure is as follows. I will call each item in the order listed on the agenda. Where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant will proceed with their presentation if desired. If the committee does not require a presentation, applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to speak on the item. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter into the committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, excuse me, is given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when you are reaching the five minute limit. When addressing the committee, please state clearly your name and address. Please remember to confine your remarks to the matters described in the application. The applicant or agent proceeds first and will make their presentation to the committee. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. To ensure that a revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice of the application are informed of the changes, the committee may decide to defer the application if it has been substantially revised. Then, individuals either in support or opposed to the application are invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they have finished their presentation. When all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent has an opportunity to rebut only those issues that were raised by the previous speakers. This marks the end of discussion on the item. The application is then taken into committee for a decision. Are there any uh, declarations of conflict of interest that uh, committee members might like to declare? No, we have none. I have a deferral request that I'd like to deal with uh, at this time. It's item number 39, 135 St. Leonard's Avenue. I have 
the agent here that is a, just a moment, let's find it. David Bronskill, are you there, sir? I, I am, sir, thank you. Yes, Mr. Bronskill, I just wanted to ask, uh, I'm noting in the file that there is a report from city planning dated the 21st of April, 2021, and it recommended some significant, a long length of recommended variances to your application. So I understand you're requesting a deferral. Is that the deal with city planning? Um, sir, it's slightly different. We we have made, we are aware of that report with thanks and we have, our client has agreed to make the changes um, requested by city planning. Um, sir, we've had in recent days, in fact, some additional discussions with the two neighbors on either side um, and with uh, their solicitor, uh, Ms. Mahadevan. Those discussions, sir, have been very positive. I have to be careful not to disclose the contents of those discussions uh, because they are without prejudice, but they've been very positive, sir. Um, there will probably be some refinements or revisions to the site plan. Um, and we do need, I think, some time, sir, just to perfect the details. And so rather than going ahead today, um, and I think, sir, increasing the chances of being at a T-Lab appeal, uh, we notified those the solicitor for those neighbors that we would be making this deferral request. And we would prefer, sir, to take the deferral and see if we can't finalize that settlement for when we would be back in, in front of the panel, sir. So th that's the nature of the deferral request, sir. Um, we think it increases the chances of a resolution, um, especially, sir, among the, the most immediately impacted neighbors. Okay, thank you, sir. I'll just, uh, I, uh, we have four other, five other persons registered to speak, so I'll have to uh, get their opinion on the issue of a deferral. So I'll just go through that list now. I have a Lutz full graph. Are you there, sir? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Full graph. I can hear you. Do you have an object? The applicant is requesting a deferral. Do you have an objection to that? I'm sorry for asking, but we are on the item 39, right? Item 39. Yes. 135 yes. St. Leonard's Avenue. I'm okay with the deferral. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to the next person on the list. I have a Marcus Cargill. Are you there, sir? Uh, yes, I am. Sir, uh, do you have, the applicant is requesting a deferral. Uh, do you have an objection to a deferral? I do not. Okay, thank you. Go to the next person on the list, the Sharmini Mahadevan. Are you there? Um, yes, uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair. As Mr. Bronskill mentioned, I represent uh, the neighbors on either side. And yes, we are on side with the deferral as that would give our clients uh, an opportunity to work, uh, to have further discussions with Mr. Bronskill's okay, client. Thank you. I go to the next person on the list, Ellen Watt, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you for uh, calling me in. Um, so I'm representing 10 people on Dollish Avenue. And um, if, you know, we're, I'm okay with the deferral, but we need to be involved in the, the process with, um, with the architects. Okay, thank you. I'll go to the next person on the list. Alan Liu, are you there? Uh, Mr. Chair and members, Alan's not on the call at this present time. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll go back to Mr. Bronskill. Mr. Bronskill? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chair, I'm here. Okay, thank you, sir. I'm just going to take the matter into committee. I'll just ask the committee, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Can I get a motion on the deferral, please? Mr. Kidd? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to put uh, forward a motion to defer the application sine die to allow the applicant to meet with the neighbors and uh, discuss their application. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kidd. Someone to second that motion? Ms. Sankar seconds, all those in favor? And motion carries. Sir, your application has been uh, deferred to the next available meeting so that you can uh, meet with the affected neighbors. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I do thank the panel and, and um, Mr. Wills in particular at staff level for advancing the deferral given that we were the second last item on the agenda. I think the group as a collective appreciates that indulgence. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
go Mr. back to item Mr. number. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman, can we please call item 29? Item number 29, okay. Adam, can you get the agent on? Oh, I'm sorry, item number 29, 96 dollars. Mr. Chairman, we have a email just came in from the local councillor, Jay Robinson, and her email reads, I am writing to urgently request that the Committee of Adjustment defer the minor variance application for 96 dollars Avenue which is scheduled to be considered this afternoon. Over the last few weeks, the local neighbors have been working with the applicant on a revised proposal that addresses the community's concerns. Unfortunately, I have been advised that the new drawings submitted by the applicant are not reflective of the changes that were agreed upon with the neighbors. For these reasons, I am requesting that the committee defer the application so that the applicant can correct these discrepancies in consultation with the local community. Please ensure this email is brought to the attention of the committee. Okay, I'll just ask, is, uh, is the agent on this? We have, is Babak Gassemi there? He is the agent for 96 Dollish Avenue. Correct. Babic, did you hear the... Hello, Mr. Chair. Mr. Gassemi, are you there? Yes. Uh, Would you... Hi, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm here. You've heard the... Uh, you've heard the comment from the, the letter that Mr. Uh, Antonacci read from the councillor requesting that your application be deferred? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I think there is a uh, miscommunication or confusion there. We are totally aware... Uh, of the changes requested by the uh, neighbors and we came to an agreement uh, with our dear neighbors uh, over the past few days. There is no discrepancy in our drawings. <coughs> uh, uh, once I have the opportunity to present uh, the uh, pro uh, proposal to the committee, uh, I can go over uh, what has been agreed and uh, how it's reflected on our drawings. For that, for those reasons, I don't, I don't see why uh, a deferral would be necessary. So you do not wish to defer your application? Uh, no, sir, because uh, everything is in uh, agreement uh, and um, the drawings uh, have changed to address those issues that uh, were raised by uh, neighbors. Mr. Antonacci, if the applicant doesn't want to defer his application. It'll be up to the members to hear the application and make their decision. Yes, uh, so we'll, we'll, he'll go back on the regular list then at item number 29. I'll go back to the beginning of the application. Item number 21. I have one, this is 106 Otter Crescent. I have four people registered to speak. The agent is Winda Lau, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, Ms. Lau, I wanted to uh, just go through this number of staff reports on file with your application. I just want to go through them. Sure. I have city planning has a report of the 9th of April. They appear to have no objection to your application, provided the properties develop substantially in accordance with the site plan and north side elevation drawings submitted to the Committee of Adjustment. Attached as attachment one and two to their report. We have a report from Transportation Services dated the 19th of April of this year. They appear to have no objection, but it's conditional on you reducing the width of the driveway within the public right of way to 3.4 meters and adding a notation uh, indicating a standard condition about closing and restoring driveways. And we also have a report from Urban Forestry that's recommending your application be refused because it requires removing a private honey locust tree. Uh, so it, what I would suggest, have you had the opportunity to read those reports, madam? Yes, I have. So if you could give, uh, if you could give the committee a brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal, please. And you may want to address that comment from urban forestry. Sure. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, committee members. My name is Wendell Lau. I'm the architect as well as a homeowner at 106 Otter Crescent. If we can please pull up the supporting material that I submitted. 
Uh, I just want to start by saying that we've been on Otter Crescent for 14 years and we really love our neighborhood. We're raising our family here and we're looking to grow old here and what we're really hoping to be our forever home. The pandemic has been tough for everybody. My husband goes to work every day as an essential worker. I'm working from home full time while supervising my six year olds online schooling. So while we're extremely grateful for what we have, this experience has also made us reevaluate how we live and use our spaces. So now we're hoping to build a new home that's going to reflect all of these changes. The current variances we requested are a result of discussions with City of Toronto planners. We have worked with city planners and changed our initial proposal to reduce the overall height, building length at the second story and lot coverage to the satisfaction of city staff. We also have letters of support from some of our direct neighbors, including the two directly across from us at 105 and 107 Otter and our neighbors next to us immediately to the north at 108 Otter. So I'm just gonna quickly go over the variances that require more explanation and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have after. Variance number one, we're requesting a building height of 8.89 meters to the top of the flat roof. And I'm gonna tie this in with variance number seven because it asks for a parapet height of point, uh, sorry, of 9.09 .09 meters, which is just 0.2 meters higher than the requested roof height. Can we go to page two, the next page, please? Um, in this diagram, the gray area is our proposed house and the thick dotted red line shows a permitted roof line of an as of right pitch roof house with a height of 10 meters. So while our requested roof height does exceed the allowable height for a flat roof, I very intentionally designed the house in order to respect the intent of the zoning bylaw. The upper floors of the house is actually set back from the foremost front main wall on both the north and south sides. And this was done specifically in order to reduce the effects of the height as well as amassing on the streetscape. And we also have the stepping back occurring at the rear. So by stepping back the upper level, we're well behind the permitted roof line. And I think this really illustrates that we are respecting the intent of the bylaw. If we go to next page three, um, this is a massing comparison between our proposal and that of an as of right house with a 10 meter height. And you can see that the massing of our proposal is actually less than that of a house that can be built without any minor variances. Next page four, please. This is a diagram that illustrates the heights that have been granted in their immediate neighborhood in comparison to our proposal. And these include houses with flat or shallow roofs. And you can see that what we're requesting is very much in line with what's already in the neighborhood and is quite characteristic of the area. And then pages five to eight, if we can just scroll through quickly, they're just images of some of the other houses in the immediate neighborhood. Um, and these serve to illustrate the scale of the houses in our area, as well as the presence of contemporary and flat roof houses in the neighborhood. So moving on to variance number two, uh, we're requesting a building length of 19.53 meters. And at the same time, I'll address variance number eight, where we're requesting a building depth of 19.53 meters. So again, I wanna note that at the request of city planners, we have pulled back the second story at the north and south sides, and it was done to the satisfaction of the city staff. Um, if we can skip to page 10, uh, the building length and depth that we're requesting here is consistent with the others approved by the Committee of Adjustment in the neighborhood. There's a number of homes in the area that have building lengths in excess of 20 meters. And this is a list of them, and the highlighted items are the approved variances that are greater than what we're requesting. So if we can go back to page nine, please. Uh, yeah, this diagram shows our proposal as well as the lines where as of right length and depth are. So while the allowable length is 17 meters, the allowable depth is the actual marker of how far back into your property you can build from the front yard setback. So it's very possible for someone to build a length compliant house and locate it on the property in such a way that the rear wall is at 19 meters depth without having to go to the committee of adjustment. What we're requesting is only 0.53 meter extra from this allowable building depth. I also wanna bring up in this diagram, the dark gray area is um, the area of the house at the highest point of 9.09 .09 meters. The length of this is only 17 meters and all of this length is behind the allowable 19 meter depth line. Uh, pages 11 to 13, please. These are just some sun studies and they're showing Madam, that- can you summarize please? Sure. Uh, there's no shadow effects on the neighbors to the south of us, and we do have um, support from the neighbor to the north of us. So uh, in conclusion, I, I do believe that we meet the four tests, and I ask that the committee approve Thank you, our Madam. proposal. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? There being, oh, Ms. Sankar? 
Um, sorry, I don't know if I had missed uh, this being addressed, but can you just address about the transportation um, uh, concerns? Um, sorry, the chair. Yeah, sure. it, there's no objections, but uh, still it affects one of your variances to be refused. Sure, uh, they they have no objection, except that they're asking that in the right of way that we reduce the driveway width to the, I believe, the three point something meters and we are happy to comply with that. Okay, yeah, so it's 3.44 meters. Yes. yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Go to the next person we have on the list. I have Henry Chu. Are you there? Henry Chu or Mary Chu, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Can I get your full name and address, please, madam? Oh, I. My name is Mary Chu, and uh, my husband was going to speak, so I'll just let Henry speak. Okay. He... okay Sir, can Henry. I get your full name and address, please? My name is Henry Chu. I live at 104 Otter Crescent. My wife, Mary, and I own the resident, resident at 104 Otter Crescent. We have a, a written major reason in objecting the proposed building. I am retired in my golden years. I would like to continue enjoying most of the pleasures I enjoyed in my home. Good sight line and privacy on my, on my sun deck and breakfast room. My main reason for rejecting uh, also, I object to the post, the proposed sun deck to be added to the rear of the house six feet higher than grade, a deck that's about six feet above grade, 12 by 12. This will invade a lot of my privacy and creating a dawn sight light, as you would see on uh, the applicants plans in page A100 and A4-16 and on page three of the letter I submitted. Replacement of brick for the corrugated metal will improve the building wall 100%. Base, base is very deep. 3.9 meters, 12 foot below grade, could cause major damage to my house foundation. Therefore, could cause the, the breaking of drain tiles and cracking of my wall. Kitchen window is six feet higher than grade. There again, I will, could lose my privacy on the Sunday and breakfast room. And I suggest that the window be removed, even though they might want to put opaque glass on the window. Today at 10.30 a.m., I did not see the committee adjustment display in the front of the house as required by the committee adjustment application. I have pictures. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and your committee in considering hearing my major objections. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll go to uh, next person on the list. I have Eli Aaron. Are you there, sir? I'm here. Yes, thank you, sir. Could I get your full name and address, please? My name is Eli Aaron. Address is 25 Edgecombe Avenue. Okay, if you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application. 
Thank you. Um, my name's Eli Aaron, and I've been a resident of the community for 22 years. I serve on the board of directors at the Lytton Park Residents Organization, where I'm involved with numerous local planning issues. Our organization covers over 2,000 households. I will be speaking in opposition to this application. I've been in touch with several neighbors, including those to the immediate south, who will be greatly impacted by the proposal. You will see there are seven letters of objection to the application. The approval of this application is not in the best interest of the neighborhood. The Lytton Park Residence Organization is opposed to the proposed height and length variances. The proposed height is completely inappropriate for a flat roofed house. The proposed height of 8.9 meters is 1.7 meters or 23% greater than the bylaw permitted height for a flat roofed house, which is 7.2 meters. In addition, the main walls continue 0.2 meters beyond the roof. The proposed length of 19.53 meters exceeds the permitted length by over two and a half meters. The proposed height and length variances are neither minor in nature nor respect the intent of the zoning bylaw. In the subject community, there are about 170 houses. Of those, only a single house with a flat roof exceeds the proposed height of 106 Otter Crescent. Section 415 of the official plan is clear that development in neighborhoods must respect and reinforce the existing physical character, including the prevailing heights, massing, and scale. As I have just stated, a, a flat roofed house with a height of 8.9 meters does not respect or reinforce the prevailing character of the community. All other examples of flat roofed houses provided by the applicant are outside of the community. Most are on the opposite side of a major arterial road up to half a kilometer away. These do not represent the prevailing character of the community. In their supporting materials, the applicant has attempted to combine examples of sloped roof houses with flat roofed houses, but the two are clearly not the same. They are governed by different sections of the zoning bylaw, which assign different maximum heights. You should also be aware that the photos of the neighborhood have been uh, carefully selected and they do not represent the prevailing character of the neighborhood. The proposed length of the house will greatly impact the adjacent neighbors in closing the north side of their backyard with a large wall. The excessive length of the house will also result in the removal of a mature tree. The forestry uh, report requests the committee reject the requested length variance due to the destructive impact on the tree canopy. In closing, the proposed height and length fail to maintain the intent of the zoning bylaw fail to maintain the intent of the official plan and are not minor, nor are they desirable. Furthermore, the application is opposed by the forestry department. For these reasons, the Lytton Park Residents Organization urges you to reject this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll go to the uh, next person on our list. I have a Donald Chu. Are you there? I am here. This is Donald Chu. Can I get Chu. your full name and address, please? Yes, my name is Donald Chu. My address is 12 Coach Cream Avenue in Toronto. Okay, if you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application. Yes, I would like the committee to consider rejecting the application as presented. It exceeds the height variance allowed. It exceeds the length variance allowed. The cladding on the outside will look like an industrial warehouse, which will not be very pleasing to the eye nor fitting to the neighborhood. It will also, the windows will also um, impact the privacy of the neighbors and the photographs within the presentation deck by 106 Otter Crescent are not quite in fitting, in fitting with the neighborhood. If you were to drive around the neighborhood, you would note that these pictures were pretty much cherry picked from a small cluster here and there. So that's all I have to say. 
Okay, so I just wanted to ask, uh, where, where, where are boats is your property? My property is approximately one kilometer away, hey, and I've been a resident of this neighborhood. Yeah, okay, all right. So you're not personally affected by this? Well, I am personally affected by this, as um, Henry and Mary are my parents. Okay, all right, um, thank you. One thing I... Any questions of the speaker? I'll go to the next person on the list. Tamara Farber, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Can I get your full name and address, madam? Yes, Tamara, T-A-M-A-R-A, -A -A, Farber, 102, Otter Crescent, two doors south of the proposed development. Okay, thank you. Please uh, let it, give us your thoughts on this application. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman and the committee. Um, I have lived as a resident here for 21 years with my husband and two children and um, consider ourselves friendly with uh, the applicant. We wish them, uh, uh, we do want them to, to build their dream house. We just want them to do it in accordance with uh, the proposed zoning bylaws. Um, not to uh, duplicate other speakers, we would reiterate the comments on the height and depth and the cladding and um, indicate that this will impose privacy issues, not only for 104, but for 102, where we reside, given that the proposed depth of the lot will essentially go um, almost entirely into our, our full depth of our backyard. Um, there are no um, wood fences between 106, 104, and 102. There are open chain link fences. And so privacy is a, a, a real concern. It hasn't been an issue for 20 years, um, and uh, we hope it will continue uh, not to be. Um, the other point that I would like to make is with respect to the tree in the backyard. Um, the development is actually uh, uh, originally a creek, Otter Creek, and um, the uh, removal of a substantial 80, 90 year old tree um, with groundwater and surface water flowing southbound has the potential to cause uh, overland surface flooding. And um, we, uh, we don't know, uh, you know what the plan is for alternating, but it is impossible to replace a 100 year old tree and um, the impacts that that causes to uh, groundwater and surface water, particularly in rainy seasons, all homes on this side of the street uh, have stump pumps and um, there is a significant chance for flooding. So we, um, we are concerned about the, the tree, um, which in turn relates to the depth of the proposed development. Thank you, committee. Those are my submissions. Thank you. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? And being not, we'll go back. We'll go back to the uh, agent. Uh, Wendell Lau, are you there? Yes. Yes, I'm here. Yes, if you can, you've heard the comments from the previous speakers, if you'd like to uh, reply to their comments. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm just going to talk quickly about height first. I understand we are asking for increased height, but again, we very specifically designed it in order to respect uh, the bylaws, the intent of the bylaws, and um, we've stepped back the upper levels, thereby reducing the effects of the height and massing on the streetscape. And it's in fact, um, the impacts of the massing is less than that of an as of right house. Um, uh, Mr. Aaron had a comment that we showed examples of pitch roof houses in our comparisons, and this is true, but at the same time, um, we've demonstrated that our the effects of our height is in fact less than that, and so I think that it's a fair uh, comparison. Um, in terms of the building length, um, I really do understand that this is a change for our neighbors. Um, we will be extending past their current house. This is something that they're not used to. But the fact is, even at a length of 17 meters, we will be extending past their house by almost two meters and effectively doing the same thing. The fact that their house is currently not developed to the full potential of the site is certainly making it a bit worse for them, but the bylaw does allow a building depth of 19 meters. Um, and there's really nothing stopping them or anyone else on our street from building to this depth. If we can pull up page 24 on my package quickly. Um, this is just a comparison between um, an as of right house 
built to the 19 meter depth versus what we're proposing. And the difference between this is not great. So the next page, please. Yes, there. So um, as you can see uh, on top, this is an as of right house built out to the 19 meter depth. Um, and the bottom image is our proposal. So I want to point out we're also respecting all setback requirements, which means our house is actually narrower than what it currently is. We're fully compliant with the rear yard setbacks, and our side yard setback on the south side is in fact at 1.2 meters greater than what's required, simply because we anticipated the voting code requirements to put windows on that base. Um, I want to quickly mention that the photo of the corrugated metal that was pulled up on the screen is certainly not what we're, we're suggesting. Um, this is just an image that uh, our neighbors Googled. Um, the views from our neighbor's breakfast room, his breakfast room is set back right now. And so, in fact, his view is to the side of our house and to our neighbors. We're extremely close to Warren's Avenue. We're two houses in. Um, and so beyond us, the view is actually of a major arterial street with a lot of cars and trucks and traffic noise. This is part of the reason why we're not having windows on that side, simply because it's not a nice view and to minimize the street noise. Um, I'm going to address this tree. Um, I have to say I was a bit taken back by urban forestry's recommendation. Our intention is obviously to do everything properly. We've already submitted uh, this application with a replanting plan, and we're fully aware that there's conditions that we have to comply with. We were told by TPS that they were going to hold our application until after the hearing. And so we haven't had a chance yet to discuss any measures that we might take or to provide any additional documentation from our arborist to support our case. Again, we're happy to comply with any conditions that urban forest will place. And it's our understanding that even if the committee chose to approve our application, we would still have to go through TPS and urban forestry to remove or damage that tree. And we just would really like the chance to have that conversation with them. Thank you. Um, thank, yeah, you thank you. I had a question with respect to the property that's immediately uh, to the north of you. That's a newer home. Uh, yes. Do you know that it's with a mansard roof? Do you know how how tall that building is? Um, I'm not certain, but I know that they did not go to the committee of adjustment for that house, and so I believe that it has had to comply with the max height um, as per the old North York bylaw, which was I think is it 8.8 .8 meters. Okay. Thank you. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? Okay, through you, Mr. Chair. I mean, I've listened to the debutants, what they've said, and some of the valid points they made, but I just also feel that uh, um, the application as is and the explanations provided um, uh, do sit well with me. Um, so, what I propose is um, a motion to approve the application, but I'll make it subject to the April 9th um, staff report that the property be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan and north side elevation drawing submitted to the committee. Uh, it will be subject to forestry, as was indicated by the applicant, and uh, that's within the application as well. And I will subject it to the April 19th transportation report in which uh, they will need to reduce the width of the driveway within the public right of way to 3.44 meters and add a notation on the site plan drawing stating that all portions of existing access driveways that are no longer required must be closed and restored with soft landscaping and no and full concrete curbs at no cost to the city to the satisfaction of transportation services. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Someone to second that motion. Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. And Madam, your application has been unanimously approved subject to urban forestry, city planning, and transportation services conditions. Thank you. Thank you. Now on item number 22, 80 Woburn Avenue. I have seven people registered to speak, and the uh, I have the agent Drew Laszlo. Are you there, sir? 
Definitivamente ir. Yes, hello, sir. Can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I have, uh, looking through your file, I note there are two uh, staff comments here. A recommended condition from Urban Forestry, and as, there's a comment from City Planning dated the 9th of April of this year. Uh, they're recommending that you revise the application by eliminating variance number six for the proposed year, uh, for the proposed year, year, rear yard landscaping. Are you proposing to eliminate that variance, sir? Yes. Okay, so variance number six, which is the proposed rear yard landscaping area, is 31.04%. You're, you're deleting, you're eliminate, you're deleting that variance. Correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have, as I said, there's six other pe people who'd like to speak on this application, sir. If you could give us a presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal. Sure. Um, so this is for a new dwelling, new three-story dwelling. The main thing I want to bring to everybody's attention is, so this is kind of a strange one for me as well. I'm not sure this has ever happened on one of my past projects, but variance is one, two, three, five, and seven are really technical in nature. They, the, the only reason I need those variances, and they're all related to the point four six side yard setback. The only reason those are even required is because there is one window on the west side of the proposed dwelling. And if we did not have that window there, then as of right, we would be allowed to build the house at the setback that we are proposing for that side. So really we would be left with one variance of GFA, the 85% or floor space index. So that's why this one's kind of kind of strange because as far as I see it, for all intents and purposes, we can form to height, length, setbacks, wall height. We've eliminated the landscaping, the rear landscaping variance. So we don't have any issues there. And uh, yes, and that's that's all I have to say at this point. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll go to uh, next person on the list. I have Lutz Fullgraf. Are you there? They're at 80 Warburn Avenue. I did not request to speak to that. Oh, sir, you, you don't want to speak? 80 Warburn Avenue, I do, have not registered for. I registered for the next one, Mount Pleasant. Okay, so you're not, you're not speaking to this one. Okay, thank you. For the next person on the list. Uh, Demetra Hazana, are you there? Yes, I am here. It's myself and my husband. My husband will, will be speaking. Yes, hello. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's uh, Tramal Mahalingam and Demetra Hazana. Address is 78 Woburn Avenue. Okay, if you'd um, like to... Uh, and we are the... Okay, if you'd like to tell us, give us your thoughts on this application. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we have submitted uh, three concerns. Um, if you could perhaps uh, bring up our uh, presentation or our concerns up on the screen, that would be helpful. Um, we have three concerns. Uh, concern number one uh, is regarding uh, the drawing uh, per, uh, submitted by uh, Vladimir Dosen surveyors on January, 20, uh, January 30th, 2019, and also the architectural plan submitted by Drew Laszlo. Um, the drawings, if you could go to um, uh, page number five, um, the drawings submitted, stop there, please. Uh, um, the drawing submitted shows uh, a um, boundary tree straddling 78 Woburn and 80 Woburn. The drawing shows a uh, diameter of 2.4 uh, meters with a radius of uh, 2.4 meters. Um, we feel that, that that drawing is incorrectly uh, represented. Um, the actual diameter of the tree uh, measured at 1.4 meters from the ground at DBH uh, is actually uh, 0.9 meters or 95 centimeters. 
uh, which would require a tree protection zone of six meters. And as you can see in the drawing, the, the tree protection zone uh, extends uh, into the proposed home that's going to be built. If you go to figure number um, three, which is the last page, you could see uh, a recent picture taken of the tree's diameter, as well as um, as well as the uh, figure number two, which is uh, the previous page. Um, that could show you the uh, existing canopy of the tree. If you could go back to the pre yeah, perfect. If you could see uh, the figure number two, the existing canopy of the tree taken from a Google um, aerial view shows the canopy extending over the existing house right now. Um, what we are, we are in favor of and will provide support for the removal of the tree um, the, uh, we don't believe the, uh, the urban forestry department has been informed of this tree. Uh, what we ask is the correct diameter of the tree be represented in all city drawings and submissions. As it stands right now, um, there is a, there is an, a, a, there is a mistake uh, in representing the size of the diameter of the tree and the required uh, tree protection required for that tree. Um, as we are afraid that um, should the tree be, should the construction go ahead, Without the removal of the tree, uh, the tree root could be damaged and eventually destroy, uh, fall on to 78 woven or neighboring houses and destroy uh, the house and uh, possibly harm the people living there. So our concern is the removal of the tree and then we uh, remove the tree. Uh, concern number two is in accordance with architect Guru Laszlo's plan, the setback from the proposed eastern wall is 0.9 meters and the proposed depth and the finished basement height, uh, height is going to be about 3.1 meters or 10.2 feet below the grade. The proposed construction has a potential of causing structural damage due to excessive vibration of the basement uh, construction equipment, soil caving due to inadequate shoring, and water penetration compromising the basement walls of 78 Woburn Avenue, which we have already waterproofed from the inside in 2015 and have had no leaks at all. We request that the owner of A.D. Woburn undertake a plan and process prepared by a licensed structural engineer, which includes proper engineering shoring plans to provide temporary and permanent support to the structures on our property located at 78 Woburn Avenue. This undertaking could include pre-construction survey, sequence of construction, periodic monitoring and survey of adjoining buildings and structures on 78 Woburn Avenue during construction. Also, we requested a vibration assessment plan and a frequent vibration monitoring of the adjoining buildings on 78 Woburn Avenue be done. Uh, along with other neighbors, there are, I think, six other objections. Uh, we are also in, uh, in concern about the surface water runoff. Uh, that's regarding um, section number six of the, the variance request, which I am assuming that it's going to be removed, so we have no concern Sir, can you it. summarize, please? Uh, uh, in summary, we just want to, we are giving, uh, we're in favor of removing that tree that's uh, straddling both properties. And we would like urban forestry to be involved in the process and all drawings submitted to the city to be accurately represented specifically in regards to the tree, because right now it's not. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank Any questions, thank you, sir. Speaker? Thank you for your time. There being none, we'll go to the next person on the list. I have a Nicole Spence. Nicole Spence. Hi. Yes, I am here. Can you yeah. hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can I get your full name and address, please? Sure. It's Nicole Spence, 63 Cranbrook Avenue, Toronto, Ontario, M5M 1M3. Okay. Can you tell us uh, your concerns with the application? Absolutely. So I've submitted a letter, but to summarize the letter, um, this is a request of seven variances, although I do agree with the staff letter that was withdrawing the variance of number six. Um, so I feel that these variances actually are not minor in the fact that there are six of them. They all exceed the allowances in height, depth and width um, for this area and the bylaws. I'm particularly concerned about the setback variances that won't allow for sufficient space between the adjacent buildings for safety uh, to get back and forth between the buildings for fire, general maintenance and roofing and things like that. So to move between these two houses is exceptionally challenging and to add um, the setbacks, uh, changing the setbacks will make it even more difficult. The third floor of this uh, proposed site has uh, huge dormers 
on the side of each side of the building. They're very large. They are outside the limits of zoning and will have a significant impact on both 78 and 84. Even though those are only two story houses, if they ever decide to go to three story, they're going to have difficulty building a three story, but also will have a, an impact on light um, to those houses in their backyards. Uh, in addition, this dormers on the outside of the two sides of the houses is definitely out of character in the street. Normally the dorm uh, dorms are put on the front of the house or the back of the house, and this is very out of character. The overall bulk and mass of the house are definitely going to affect the sunlight and light in the backyards, mainly of 80 Woburn. And I also am concerned that just in general, the demolition of the existing home, it's going to be very close to the foundations of both of 78 and 84, which also speaks to uh, the gentleman that was just speaking at, at 78 that there will be property damage when it comes to the foundation and possible water leakage and, and drainage problems in the future. Um, I think it's very important that we maintain the current zoning bylaws and setbacks to maintain the character of the street and the street streetscape of this neighborhood. Um, and so I really want to make sure that the committee is only permitting variances that fall with in the current restrictions and the bylaws and preserving the nature of the street. And those are my my comments. Thank you. Any questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll go to the next person on the list. I have a uh, Renee Mahalingam. Are you there? Yes. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. I'm sorry, I will not be. I'm just an observer. Can I get your full name and address, please? Rani Mahalingam, 70 Gate Drive, Scarborough. Okay, madam, just to be clear, you're not directly affected by of, this application, are you? I'm the mother of uh, 78 Woburn Avenue. Okay, thank you. If you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application. It has already been addressed by my son, but I do have a comment regarding demolition. When you demolish the house completely, there are some uh, some certain things need to be adhered to. Hopefully, the owner will attend to that regarding the OSHA uh, so guideline about dust and asbestos and stuff like that, because there are children living in the adjoining neighboring houses. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll go to our last person on the list. I have a Kara Wells. Are you there? Hi there. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can I get your full name and address, please, madam? Yep, it's uh, Kara Wells at 84 Wilburn Avenue. It's the uh, residence that's just directly west of uh, 78. Um, so we submitted a letter of support for the um, for the uh, house. Um, we ha we obviously have general concerns about when when there is demolition and the impact on our house. But currently, as you'll see from um, the drawings, that there's only a 0.14 distance between our houses. Um, so you know. The, even though the um, the distance between the houses will be outside the bylaws, it's still more than what we have right now. Um, and you know, we fully expect that you know any remediation or any um, uh, work will be done to ensure that our um, house doesn't fall down. Obviously, um, just due to the the uh, distance between our houses and the impact of the demolition. But overall, the variances we don't have any concerns. But um, we just expect that um, when if the construction does happen, that there will be um, Okay. We'll be okay, done to ensure that our house is safe. Thank you very much, madam. Uh, any questions of the speaker? There being none, uh, we'll go back to the agent, Mr. Laszlo. Are you there? As far as the tree size being improperly documented, that's correct. That was taken from the survey, and unfortunately, it was incorrect on the survey. So we will update that uh, the diameter of the tree 
we have an arborist on board already and we are going to work with the neighbors and decide if we're going to take that tree down or apply for a um, permit to injure that tree, but we're going to go through all the appropriate channels with urban forestry and we're going to work with the neighbors to make sure um, there's no issues with that tree. Uh, as far as shoring is concerned, yes, we will need to shore due to the depth and the proximity, you know, to the side property lines. We're going to have a structural engineer involved. We're going to do that all appropriately as well. Uh, let me see here. We do, so we do have support from the West neighbor. Okay, as you know, I think that letter's on file. And the setbacks, just for the committee's uh, information, you can see from the just to reiterate. The side setbacks, the proposed side setbacks are greater than the current house. You can see that sort of shown on the site plan. You can see the outline of the existing house. You can see what's being proposed. We are further away from the side property lines than the current house. As far as the dormers are concerned, they comply. Uh, is it, you know, there's a rule about if they're no, if they take up no more than 40% of the overall length of the house, they're permitted to be there. And we are under 40%, so we do comply. And, and I guess it just in, in sort of closing the massing, like, yeah, we do have the variances. I've kind of already mentioned how really the vast, vast, vast majority, except for one of them, really all except for one, are technical in nature. And the overall massing of the house totally conforms to the bylaw. Yeah, I just so wanted I to ask, to sir, with respect to that. Sure. It conforms with the, the bylaw with respect to the building length, the building depth, uh, front yard setback, rear yard setback, building height. Correct, it does. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Mr. Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in reading the, uh, the staff report, uh, they indicated that they, uh, recommend refusal of uh, variance number six. And I believe somewhere in there, uh, it says that the applicant has agreed to that. Uh, yes, well, he's already agreed to that, Mr. Hunt. Okay. He's, that, he's, already, de he's already deleted number six. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that that had happened. Any further questions of the speaker? Could I get a motion on this application, please? This revised application, please note that he has deleted variance number six with respect to the rear yard landscaping. Ms. Sankar? Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair, I accept the explanations provided by the applicant here today, and I will mo make a motion to approve this application. I'll make it subject to the April 9th staff report in that, um, I guess he's he's already removed the variance number six, so that meets that staff report. It's also going to be subject to uh, urban forestry, as was discussed, and uh, that's my motion. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Someone to second that? Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? The motion carries unanimously. Uh, sir, your application has been unanimously approved subject to urban forestry and city planning conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Go to our next application, uh, item number 23, 1356 Mount Pleasant Road. I have one, two, five people registered to speak, and the agent is a Mr. Uh, Nilafar Barad Bar Baradaran. I'm, I'm sure I've mangled yes. that. Yes. If you could, uh, are you there, sir? Yes, I am. Oh, I'm sorry, here. Madam. Can I get your full <laughs> name and address, please? Uh, my name is Nilufa Barodaron, and my address is 7167 Young Street, Unit 609. Okay, thank you, madam. I'm just going through your file, and I'm looking. I'm seeing that there's a report from city planning here dated this, the 21st of April of this year, and state staff had a number of recommendations, specifically eliminating variance number two regarding the building length, eliminating variance number four regarding the front yard setback, eliminating variance number five regarding front yard landscaping, increasing variance number six regarding front yard soft landscaping from 46.12% to 63%, eliminating variance number seven regarding rear yard soft landscaping 
and eliminating variance numbers eight and nine regarding the platform encroachment into the front yard setback. They're also recommending reducing variance number three regarding the floor space index from 0 0.63 to 0 0.59 times the area of the lot. That's quite a few revisions. Now, have you had the one with respect to the floor space in, let me just, Back up a second, madam. Are, are you in favor of making those changes? Uh, I, I agree with all this. I agree with only uh, my concern is if I could change the number uh, for FSI 260. Change which? Uh, change the 0 0.59 to 0 0.6. All right. Have now is Mr. Chair, can we have the agent go item by item and yeah. read the changes uh, into the record for us? Yes, correct. You'll ha if you could do us a favor, madam, and go through each one of the changes that you want to make. Uh, oh, you have already uh, mentioned about what variances are eliminated. Do I need know, to Madam, do can, can you do, can can you tell the committee and the audience which variances that you want to change or revise? Uh, we already eliminated number two. Okay, variance four. number two is deleted. Yes. Four. Number four. Yes. Is that deleted? Deleted. Deleted. What's the next one? The next one, five, is deleted. Is deleted, okay. And seven. Hang on just a second. False. Is, is number six, is that amended? Six, six uh, improved to 63%. So it goes from 46.12% to 63%. Right. Okay, that's the rear yard landscaping. Okay, variance number yes. seven. Deleted. Deleted, seven is deleted. Variance, hang on just a second. Eight. Variance number eight. Also deleted. Deleted. Variance number nine. Deleted. Number nine is deleted. Okay. And Variance number three. Variance number three improved it to, uh, now I am, uh, it improved already to 61.75%, but, but now I am uh, changing it to 0 0.6. Okay, so you're changing it from 0 0.63 to 0 0.60. Right. Okay, all right then. Are, is that all the changes you're proposing to make? Yes. Okay. We have a number of people here who are, want to speak on this application. So if you can go through, uh, make a presentation to the committee and the audience as to uh, the merits of your revised application. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, a new to a story house is going to be built at the location of the vacant land on the Mount Pleasant Road. Uh, the design is a very common case of contemporary design. Uh, we are asking only five minor variants for uh, now after, uh, after uh, discussing with the planner to improving uh, other variances. Uh, we get some agreement in the height, uh, wall height. It is one uh, variance number one. Uh, maximum allowed wall height is 7.5. The requested variance is 8.88. But this is only uh, for a box window on the front, uh, which uh, appear at the side, uh, such a narrow wall. So. The actual side wall height after reduction is now in the range of 7.8 to 8.22 meter as Pilana requested. After revision, both side, 
south and north elevations. Uh, planner has no objection. Uh, so we are going to change our drawings uh, according to these revised elevations, uh, which already sent them to the committee. Uh, so for variance number three, FSI, uh, I need uh, to have some explanation. Um, uh, the request was reduced first to uh, six, uh, 0617, and now I am going to reduce it to 0760, which planner like, recommended 0. 0.59. Uh, I am trying to reach to that to that number planner uh, recommended. It was a little bit hard structurally uh, change the design. Uh, so I tried a lot to go very close to that number. Uh, I need to mention uh, we have already had to deal uh, with many design challenges to preserve the trees at the north side uh, and ended up reduction uh, of uh, width of the house, which my client is not satisfied with. So they, because they purchased uh, this 40 foot land uh, in an expensive central Toronto and had expectation of 30 foot wide house but it's not going to happen. So because uh, keeping distance about eight foot from north side uh, for the reason of preserving the trees already shrunk the width of the house to, the, to be 25 foot and uh, even 23 foot in the middle part. Uh, so these all cause limitation for the design quality and adversely affect the floor plans. Uh, please note that this is a family of four. Uh, they need a living space uh, that is large enough uh, have separate rooms for work and study from home for the parents and children, especially during this pandemic. I um, appreciate that you could allow a bit more FSI. It would have a high impact for my client and the quality of their living space. Uh, actually, uh, what I am saying is uh, this house uh, already lost a lot of adequate width uh, for preserving the trees. So I, um, I think it deserves to uh, have a bit uh, award for um, FSI. Uh, about number variance number six, uh, we improved soft landscaping from 48 to 63 percent. Uh, I should uh, remind that we have generous green space at the north side where we keep more than three meters uh, to be reserved the trees. Uh, and uh, as uh, in, uh, if you could show my pre my diagram, yeah, you can see that the green area space, uh, my estimation is 40% overall. Uh, uh, and while the footprint of the house now after revising is less than 34%. Uh, Madam, can you summarize, about, please? Yeah, only one uh, variance 10 is about side setback is 90 meter. I wanted to show in this uh, drawing that we have 60% uh, of the wall. Uh, we have 1.6 uh, meter distance from the side wall and the lot line, and then only some parts like garage wall. Uh, we have a uh, okay, nine. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Mr. Hunt? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm wondering if the applicant is uh, familiar or has read the April 16th uh, memo from uh, Urban Forestry uh, regarding the, uh, the concern about the tree. Yes, uh, we are. We were working with Forestry, uh, and we are getting. We will get their approval for sure. Okay. So, what they're what 
I have in this uh, memo is that they would like the uh, this as put in as a condition of approval. Right. And that's the thing about uh, the substantially in accordance clause shall not apply to the north face of the building to give uh, urban forestry an opportunity to, uh, to ensure the protection of that tree. Yes, the condition is related to maybe, is it, it is not for sure, it is only maybe required uh, some uh, uh, helical pile instead of foundation wall for basement part. It's not going to change the design. So in other words, the design you're proposing uh, is, is going to uh, be sufficient to ensure that the foundation walls uh, do not uh, compromise the survival of the tree. Yes, we already sent that age of the foundation walls. Uh, we uh, we get uh, approval for some parts, but uh, just a little bit. Uh, one point for the big tree in the middle. Uh, it is only because it's uh, maybe need to put a helical part on the basement foundation wall instead of having foundation wall, irregular foundation wall. But we are going to work with that. Maybe we could uh, eliminate a helical pile, but at, it depends on we, what we could get agreement. Okay, thank you, madam. You understand that when you deal with urban forestry, there's and uh, you you have to satisfy their concerns, or you can end up before community council. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So you understand the risk. Right. Okay, thank you. We'll go to the uh, any further questions of the speaker. We'll go to the next person on the list. I have uh, Reza and Jessica Afshar. Are you there? Uh. Yes, we're here. Yeah, can I get your full name and address, please? Sure. My name is Jessica Afshar of 78 Dinnick Crescent, which lies immediately to the south of 1356 Mount Pleasant Road. Okay, if you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application. Sure. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, on behalf of my husband and myself, we would like to express our concerns and object to the proposed application as the variances should not be considered minor, but in fact major. Back in February 2019, we put our life savings into purchasing our forever family home. Before purchasing, we were fully aware of the vacant lot that one day a home would be built. We did extensive research to do our due diligence to determine how much the construction of the future home would impact our daily life, enjoyment, and the value. We were confident and trusted the restrictions set by the OMB when permitting the severance of the vacant lot. Their approval to severance the lot into two parcels came with an agreement by the OMB with an improved plan of a two story home with a maximum side wall of 6.1 meters and having a pitched roof. This gave us confidence knowing what the restrictions were and assured us that the future construction would not tower over our home, restrict our privacy, and would have the required setback of 1.5 meters from the side lot line. Our objection to variance one, having the side wall of 8.8 .8 meters next to the lot line will have a towering effect and will create a giant visual wall for us to look up at. This will enclose our backyard, drastically reduce the amount of light into our home and take away our privacy. Our view from our back windows will be a solid straight structure and will consume our total view. Again, this is not 6.1 meters restricted by the OMB and is even 1.88 meters above the set zoning bylaw. Objection to variance two, given the unique orientation of this lot due to the severance. Ma madam, our objection madam, be before you proceed, sir? I don't know if you're aware, but variance number two has been deleted. Variance number four has been deleted. Variance number five has been deleted. Variance number seven has been deleted. Variance numbers eight and nine have been deleted. The only variances that they're going for, there's four of them, is variance number one. Variance number three, they reduced the floor space index from 0.63 to 0.60. Uh, 
Uh, variance number six, the uh, landscaping goes from 46.12% to 63%, and variance number 10 remains. All the rest have been deleted. Okay, so our objection to the variance two is mostly about the proposed elevated back patio. Madam, it's it's no longer there. They deleted it. Okay, but they haven't deleted the back patio that sits well above the fence height and provides a clear view right into our family's living area. Our family and children will have zero privacy and will be fully exposed to our daily life activities that can easily be observed from such a height. The noise level of this elevated platform will also impact the enjoyment of our backyard, the neighboring properties, and we strongly disagree with this proposed elevated patio at 2.6 meters off the ground. In our letter of objection, we presented a picture that shows the impact of this height of the proposed um, patio. So objection to variance 10, by permitting a variance setback of 0.9 meters, the home is encroaching way too close to our home. Again, this will enclose our backyard, reduce light, and not allow for future growth of trees and branches marked number two and number three on the survey. These trees provide greenery and the lower branches add a little privacy to our second floor bedrooms in the summertime. We also object to the overhang of the roof structure on the first and second level that will sit 0.47 meters from the lot line and the fence level. This clearly isn't enough space between our home and property and could easily access into our backyard. This could also cause water and flooding issues of our property by not having enough space for drainage from the roof. Our objection to variance three, the proposed application is for an oversized home for an undersized lot. As there are many older homes in the neighborhood that are set for new construction on either side of our home, if this application is improved, approved, it will set a precedent for future homes to be built of such capacity and drastically reduce the green space of our neighborhood. We would like to add that on behalf of directly affected neighbors, my husband did reach out to the owner and the applicant slash architect. Madam can, you to see if could... Madam, can you summarize please? Sure, we did reach out to them um, and they, unfortunately they were not flexible with any of the changes. And we, in conclusion, are not objecting to a new construction However, we don't want the zoning bylaws to contradict the previous approval from OMB that we trusted to be in place when we purchased our home. Our family and young children shouldn't be okay, penalized you, by practically thank reducing you. our enjoyment. Any questions of the speaker? Being none, we'll go to the next person on the list. I have a Sharon Lott. Sharon Lott, are you there? Sharon. Sure, Yes, hello, I'm madam. Here. Can I get your full name and address? Yes. Yes, it's, yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. It's Sharon Lott, and I live at 70 Dinnick Crescent. I'm two doors away from uh, the, uh, Lisa and Jessica Ashcart, 78. Okay, madam, uh, if you could give us your thoughts on this revised application. Please note, madam, that the applicant's only going for five variances. Variance is number one. Yes, but no. Yeah, variance yes. number three has been revised yes. from 0 0.63 to 0 0.60. Variance number six, the landscaping has been increased from 46.12 square meters to six percent, pardon me, to 63%. And variances 10 and 11 are remaining. All the rest have been deleted. Yes, I, under yes, I understand that, Mr. Chairman. I've been on the call since uh, 1.30. Um, I would just say I'm, I'm in support of my neighbors. I, I think that this is an irregular situation because it's a unique lot in the sense that it was severed some years ago, much to the opposition of all of the neighbors for these particular reasons that something would be crammed onto that lot that's not appropriate in terms of uh, overall setbacks and, and would reduce everybody's enjoyment and privacy in the area. Um, I think that it has the risk of setting a very dangerous precedent that has, you know, in the past, other developments have been allowed to go ahead and, and they've been relied, those precedents that have been set have been relied upon by other developers. Um, well, the uh, architect or for this property has said that they've tried to reduce it. This is a new bill. So going with the city's request to reduce it to 0.59, 
I think is a reasonable request, and therefore I think that they should stick to. And number three, that the uh, floor space index should be 0.59, which was recommended. Um, the overall height should be reduced. There's no reason that a house has to be 1.88 meters oversized on on what the current bylaws are. Um, so I'm I'm not in support of this development. And I'm very concerned about being told by a future developer that um, they'll speak with the forestry department because we know from past experience that trees can be cut down and if nobody's around to see it, there's no accountability. So I'm very concerned about the 10 trees on the property that have been identified as being at risk. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and, and committee. I appreciate you taking my views. Thank you. Any questions of the speaker? Being none, we'll go back to our next speaker. I have Leslie Keating and David Keating. Are you there? David, can you hear? There we are. Can I get your yeah, full name I, and address, please, sir? It's David Keating, 22 Lawrence Crescent. We're directly north of the property being discussed. Okay, thank you. If you could give us your thoughts on this application. Thank you very much. Um, so fundamentally, we believe that the uh, that the proposal for 1356 Mount Pleasant is is um, just too large for the lot, the lot's about 55% of the standard Lawrence Park lot. Um, and they are trying to basically mitigate the fact that it's a small lot by overbuilding on that lot. Um, this went to the OMB, as I'm sure you're aware, and the OMB approved a specific set of uh, sized house for this lot. If you will see attachment six to my uh, note, uh, you'll see exactly what the OMB approved. Uh, and it doesn't reflect at all what's being proposed now. So if you wanted to flick, uh, uh, look at uh, attachment six, you'll see that the size of 6.1 uh, for the side walls, total height, et cetera. So that is not what's being uh, uh, proposed now, but uh, in violation of what was approved previously by the OMB for this lot. Uh, it'll also provide a visual wall, as Jessica talked about, for all of us, because the lot comes across from east to west, where all the other homes uh, face north-south. Uh, it'll block sunlight and privacy. Uh, we do have mature trees issues they've been dealt with. This is the most important point I'd like when it hasn't been made yet. The uh, proposal describes this lot as this uh, building as a uh, two-story building. In fact, it's a three-story building. According to the, uh, the zoning bylaws, the, the floor closest to grade is the first floor. In this particular case, the upper first floor is farther from grade than the basement. And so the basement should be considered the first floor of this property. If you look at the uh, plan submitted by the uh, applicant on A2, you turn to their A2, this reflects the basement. If you turn to A A3, this plan reflects the upper first story. There is no first story. They only have a basement and an upper first story. The upper first story is in fact 2.6 meters above grade. The basement is 1.2 meters below grade. So the basement is in fact the first story. If you add the space, of the, and that's what causes the whole issue with the height of the building, the size of the building on the lot. So if you actually were to look at the GFA, it ends up being at point, uh, 0.89, I believe it is. So fundamentally what's happened here is they've obfuscated the height of the first floor. And uh, so we would, we would really object to even the consideration, while well, you may stick with a 0.59 for the GFA, you need to include the basement, given the basement is defined by the zoning codes as the first floor. This also causes the issue with the, the deck off that first floor. That's why it's so high and is such a privacy hindrance to everybody because that first floor deck 
is actually the second floor of the building. So I would take the rest of my time asking you and the applicant to explain where the first floor is in their drawings. It certainly isn't A2, it certainly isn't A3, and A4 is, the is what they call the second floor. So there are no first floor drawings attached. Thanks, sir. Any further questions? Comments? Nope, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Nope. Committee have any questions of the speaker? Okay, thank you. We'll go to the, our last person on the list. I have a Leslie McRae. Yes, I'm here. My yes, name is I Leslie McRae. Name and I... address, please? Absolutely. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Leslie McRae, 24 Lawrence Crescent. Dear members, Committee of Adjustment, as a neighbor immediately to the north of the property in question, I'm objecting to the proposed request for variances and in a broader context, based on previous OMB decisions, the proposed construction design entirely. The property in question, as you've heard, is a unique case with a long history before previous Committee of Adjustment meetings, as well as a former OMB. The original request for severance, this property originally belonged to the property immediately to the south, 1352 Mount Pleasant, was denied twice by former Committee of Adjustment meetings before ultimately being approved by the former OMB in 2015. The reasons for the denial from the former Committee of Adjustment hearings were the severed property would be too small for a new dwelling, the orientation of the new dwelling would be in contravention of the original lot design, a new dwelling would substantially affect views and privacy of the adjacent properties, and then a mature line of trees at the southern edge of 24 Lawrence Crescent, that's my property, that's where the trees exist, would potentially be impacted. The board in their decision to approve the severance of this parcel of land in 2015 noted the concerns with respect to privacy, views, and the preservation of the trees and stated that, based on this, the board directs that the proposed dwelling be constructed in substantial compliance with the elevations found in Exhibit 6, reference OMB Order of the Board, January 20th, 2015, page 11. The original construction was to be a two-story home with a peach roof and without a raised second-story balcony. Additionally, the board required consultation from urban forestry. My objections are related to the lack of adequate protection to the mature trees at the southern edge of my property and the impact and enjoyment of the privacy of my backyard related to the overall size, height, window placement, and second-floor balcony proposed in this new construction. I've been the owner of the property at 24 Lawrence Crescent since 1995, and my love of my property is based on my backyard landscaping and the grand canopy of trees. These trees were planted by the former and only other owner prior to 1946. More densification is going to affect these trees. And I do want to note, um, it's interesting to hear, you know, the builder architect talk about urban forestry. I've had lots of discussions with urban forestry. In urban forestry, they are concerned about the trees on my property, and they have informed me they will not issue a permit for this current proposal. The proposed new dwelling will substantially impact the enjoyment and privacy on top of the trees of my backyard at 24 Lawrence Crescent, as well as you've heard from the other properties at 22 Lawrence Crescent and 78 Dinnick. Due to the orientation of this new construction, and again, no house was here previous. This is a this is an empty lot with there was never a house there before. Um, the construction of this new dwelling will effectively form a wall across our backyards with a three-story dwelling, as Dave has mentioned, with large windows and an elevated deck. The current design will result result in reduced sunset, sunlight, reduced privacy, increased noise, noise travels further from an elevated platform. I purchased my home 25 years ago with a reasonable expectation for a backyard to backyard orientation based on the original neighborhood plan. The alteration to the original neighborhood design, now inserting a dwelling perpendicular to the orientation of my lot, creates multiple issues. In summary, I request the denial of all variances and the adherence to the original design approved in 2015 by the OMB and any any further discussion must include the conditions requested of urban forestry. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll go back. Mr. To, Chair, uh, before we go any further, um, a reminder, uh, Lutz Fulgren wanted to speak to this file, and he was in inappropriately put into okay. the All right. spot uh, beforehand. So 
Um, let's full graph. Mr. Full graph, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. If you'd like to uh, give us your thoughts on this application. Good. Uh, again, my name is Lutz Fulgraf. I'm speaking for the Lawrence Park Ratepayers Association, 3219 Young Street, Box 239. Um, I think you heard from the neighbors here, uh, and, and most of them are just very disappointed that um, the staff report has not even made any reference to the OM <clears throat> excuse me, OMB decision that uh, uh, came out in 2015 and um, stated as I think an unusual statement that uh, any building on that severed lot has to be in substantial compliance with the elevation found at exhibit six. You have that exhibit six of the OMB decision on your file um, as CA correspondence from April 2021. Um, if it can be pulled up then and compared to the elevations that you see from the applicant, you will see that it's definitely not uh, in substantial compliance with the elevations uh, that had been submitted to the OMB. And uh, you also heard that the neighbors all trusted and relied on uh, the OMB decision as much as they did not like it, uh, that there was a severance at all, but uh, they have uh, they have built trust in that OMB decision and they, they used it for their renovations and the way that they set up their backyards and uh, set their expectations for the future living and enjoyment of their properties. I think it's just not right. Uh, sorry, this is not the right, um, the right uh, presentation that you're showing there. Um, it's, it, it's an, it, I think Brandon Clapp put it on there on the 20th of April and it's a 3.2 MV large uh, file. So if you find that, then you can, you can see it. Um, the, the, the drawing really shows the elevations from the OMB uh, show that uh, there was a, a conceptual idea of building a home there with 6.1 meter high sidewalls. And uh, uh, now we're facing a, uh, a building that has 8.88 meters high sidewalls. Yeah, thank you, that's, that's the one. Um, and uh, it also shows that on both sides, there would be 1.5 meters in, uh, in, in side yard uh, difference. And if you go through the various sketches, if you just scroll down there, you will see that it completely looks different from the, uh, the building that is proposed now. Uh, unfortunately, the applicants or the owners of the building or the lot have bought a, a, a lot that just does not allow for the size of building there. But to me, the bigger item is if we have two OMB decisions here already after committee of adjustment uh, decisions, I guess, at least on, on one of them, uh, and we're now going back to the OMB and are trying to adjust the decision uh, to the uh, committee of adjustment and are now trying to adjust the OMB decision um, and then go maybe for a appeal back to the OMB, where does that ever end? Uh, I don't think that's an effective use of the uh, the procedure, and I think we the, the procedural fairness in this uh, issue is somewhat compromised. Uh, I would think you heard from the neighbors that they all think that this proposal is not appropriate and desirable, uh, and I would certainly add my voice to it. I think you've heard to the individual variances that are still there uh, from uh, the other opponents, so there's no point in me going over it again. Um, you have the information and I don't want to necessarily eat into your time any more than, uh, than the other applications have done already. <laughs> um, so I let this go at this stage. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, Mr. Fulgraf, I just had a question that this OMB decision is nearly 16 years old. The, no, 2015. Yeah, and, and in terms of in terms of the, at the time it came forward, the variances they were requesting were under the old City of Toronto bylaw. That was before the new harmonized bylaw came into effect. Is that correct? Again, the because decision there's, there's, is... There's uh, no mention of the 569-2013 variances in this OMB decision. No, the OMB decision, the OMB only had 
the elevations that were shown at no, the time. No, but there was when, also, a, I understand there were, it was done in reference to the old, the old bylaws, not because when the applicant of course, they were done, it, subject to 569-2013. That's, which he that's wasn't okay. at the time if, that the consent was done. It was based on the bylaws as they were valid in 2015. So you're absolutely right, Mr. Chairman. And if we could get a house on uh, the lot that is in compliance with the bylaws of 2021, I think nobody would be objecting. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further questions of the speaker? And none, we'll go back to uh, the agent. Are you there, madam? Yes, madam, I am here. Uh, you've heard the comments from yep. the previous speakers. If you'd like to reply. Uh, nothing special, just I want to say I don't think uh, the history of this land has anything to do with our application at this time. Uh, the orientation of the land causes some complaints which is out of uh, subject of our variances. So it is out of my power as a designer to change the, this. Uh, I think there is no issue of sunlight. If you put uh, the my presentation material, I will I will indicate the distance between the two neighbors to our house is very far. So, uh, in summary, I don't think there is any legitimate reason to oppose to this project other than. There is a change happening in the area the, some neighbors are not happy with. Uh, so yeah, this in this drawing you see the the the, the, the a number here in in the bottom. Uh, it is 10.57 distance between the neighbor in the south to our lot line. So in considering with the setback uh, and going to the deck. They are complaining. Uh, you can add 4.5 on it, it's more than 15 meters distance. Uh, so I don't think it's valid uh, complaint. I uh, even it is not part of our variance. The deck, I mean. Okay, thank you, madam. Uh, before I just want to confirm again to make sure I've got everything correct. The uh, the revisions you've made to your application, variance number two has been deleted. Variance number yes. three, with respect to the uh, floor space index, is reduced from 0.63 to 0 0.60. Variance number four oh. is deleted. Variance number five is deleted. Variance number six, the landscaping has been increased from 46.12% to 63%. Variances 7, 8, and 9 are deleted. Variances 10 and 11 remain as stated on the notice. Correct? Correct. Okay, thank Correct. you. Correct. Does the committee have any further questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this revised application, please? Ms. Sankar? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, I've listened carefully to what the debutants have said. And the word substantial in my mind, and I looked it up while I was here, doesn't say exact. It actually means mostly or amply. And I think that in terms of what staff and the staff report has tried to do is to make that substantially in accordance with that decision. The applicant has adopted that. This feels to me like an application that I could accept because of the changes that they've made. And I think that they have, they should be commended on that. And for that reason, I'm going to put forward a motion to approve this application with all of the changes that uh, you have already gone through, Mr. Chair, um, and make that subject, of course, to um, uh, the final statement of the April 21st um, staff report in that, um, that the side exterior main walls be developed substantially in accordance with the north and south side elevation drawings. And as the forestry has already looked at this and have not made a report, that would be my motion without Thank you. forestry. Someone to second Ms. Sankar's motion. 
Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Mr. Hunt dissenting. Madam, your application is approved subject to city planning conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, variant, uh, pardon me, item number 24, 52 Prue Avenue. I have one person registered to speak. That's Chantel Naffert. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes, thank you, madam. I have uh, just wanted to note, I've gone through your file. I note that there are no comments or conditions uh, indicated by staff. Uh, what you're asking for is, I think, pretty clear in the four in the four variances you're requesting as regards to maintaining and legalizing a rear deck. I'll just uh, ask, is there anything you'd like to uh, add, tell the committee that isn't in the, in the material that we have before us this afternoon? No, I, I collaborate. I think it's, this is a very minor um, variance in the nature, and I, I believe the documents speak to everything clearly. Okay, thank you. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Hunt? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, uh, recognizing that there's been no departmental conditions or concerns expressed, and uh, given that I believe this meets the four tests, I would uh, recommend a motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Someone to second that motion? Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Madam, your application has been unanimously approved uh, without condition. Thank you for your patience. Wonderful. Have a good day. Thank you. Item number 25, 81 Bessborough Drive. I have one person registered to speak, a Paul Guest. Mr. Guest, are you there? Paul Guest, are you there? Mr. Chair and members, it does not look like Paul is on the call. Paul, if you have registered as something else, um, please uh, log out and log back in as Paul Guest. Mr. Wales, I'll move ahead to the next item. It should be noted that he never did officially register for the meeting. Okay, I'll go We do encourage ahead. all agents to register for the meeting. Um, so that we just can ensure that you know they get the proper information they need, um, but it does appear Paul Paul was um, circulated the link, but did not officially register. Okay, thank you, Mr. Wills. I'll leave him till I'll I'll leave him till later. We'll move ahead to item number twenty six. Uh, it's fifty two View Mount Avenue. I have one person registered to speak. That is Kevin Bichard. I hope I've pronounced that correctly, sir. Are you there? Uh, yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. It is Kevin Bashard. Very well done. Uh, I am a planner with Weston Consulting, 201 Melway Avenue okay, in Vaughan. Thank, Long. thank you, sir. I note, uh, going through your file, I note that there's a report from city planning dated the 9th of April. We appear to have no objections to your application, but they're recommending that the overall lot coverage be limited to 47.64%. Excuse me which includes the retractable pool structure representing 13.23% of the lot area. I just wanted to ask, sir, this, uh, the uh, pool enclosure, it's, uh, it's a, is it collapsible during the off season? Uh, no, it's a fixed structure, but it's retractable. So it opens and closes, obviously, but it's fixed in place. Okay, thank you. I'm just going to say it's pretty clear what you're asking for, sir. There's just the two variances before us. Uh, is there anything you'd like to tell the committee that isn't in the material that we have before us this afternoon? No, Mr. Chairman, uh, except to say this, I think that we've uh, put in a, a fairly modest uh, 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 request in the sense that it's uh, as, as tight and as efficient a structure as we can uh, put in. It's only 0.9 meters from the edge of the pool and, uh, and uh, at its height, uh, which is a peak roof, it's uh, approximately 10 feet and six feet at the size. So there has been an effort to minimize the variances. And uh, of course, there are no side yard or rear yard variances to require. This is simply for lot coverage, which of course covers a pool uh, 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 in its, in its uh, uh, application. Uh, I'm prepared to have a 
answer any questions you may have, Mr. Chair. We're satisfied to meet support tests. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Ms. Sankey? Yes, through you, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, even if this does cover um, for the pool, I was wondering because I'd seen other lot coverages, <laughs> does this not seem particularly high um, even for uh, that area and for the coverage of the pool? I'd like him to comment on that and explain to me a little bit. Yes, it, it, for in, it's part of that response. I'm wondering if um, uh, I could have the images that we've submitted uh, as part of this application brought up for review. I, I would appreciate that. There's a concept plan which shows coverage and shows massing. Of course, uh, a, a lot pools typically aren't included in the lot coverage uh, calculation. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, so this is really only covering the pool. And this first slide, uh, in terms of what we're showing you, is uh, the size of the, the building, of course, is located, and then the size of the, the pool area. And you can see that the coverage of the uh, structure is just outside of the pool area. If I go down to the next uh, slide, Mr. Chairman. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm looking for a second image. Thank you. And this is going to give you an idea of the massing. So the bottom right drawing is showing you the massing of the structure and uh, uh, relative to the massing of the house. So the house is uh, in the bottom right uh, sketching. It shows it's really quite uh, uh, limited, I would say, in terms of structure, in terms of uh, a massing of this uh, building. So this is showing you, uh, Mr. Chairman, as well, the, the nature of the structure is that it is retractable. So I think, I think when you look at the concept plan and you also look at the uh, 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 dimensioning of the drawing, uh, this is really quite a limitation. In terms of the uh, size of the accessory structure, it's only 3% greater than, than that which is already permitted by bylaw. So it goes 10% to 13.23%. So it is, I think, uh, 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 reasonably discreet. And of course, the material is, is translucent uh, it'll be glass or opaque, uh, so it isn't going to have the massing effect that you would uh, of a of a, uh, of a of a solid uh, uh, structure. Those are my comments, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Good, thank you. Uh, any further questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Kidd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I'd like to put forward a motion to uh, accept the application. I feel that it's uh, minor in nature, and uh, I'd like to make it subject to the condition that the overall lot coverage be limited to 47.64%, which includes the retractable pool structure, which represents 13.23% of the lot area. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Someone to second that motion? Mr. Hunt seconds, all those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application's been, Thank unanimously, you, Mr. been unanimously approved Thank you. To, to city planning conditions. Go back to item number 25, 81 Bestboro Drive. Uh, is the agent there, Paul Guest? Uh, Mr. Chair and uh, members, Paul is still not present. Maybe we'll hold it to the very last item at this uh, point. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Wills. I'll do that. Item number 27, 93 Golding Avenue. I have one person registered to speak. <clears throat> that is Ali Shakiri. Are you there, sir? Ali Shakiri, 326 Shepherd Avenue East. Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, I note in your file that there are no comments or con recommended conditions from staff. You have two variances before us, one for lot coverage, one for building height, very straightforward. I'll just uh, ask, is there anything you'd like to tell the committee that isn't in the material that we have before us this afternoon? No, sir, I have no presentation, but I'd be more than glad to answer any question. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? Being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. I think it is minor. It does meet the four tests, and I'll motion to approve this application. Thank you. 
Thank you. Someone to second Ms. Sankar's motion. Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been approved without condition. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 28, 488 Deloraine Avenue. I have three people registered to speak. Uh, the first person is the agent, Murat Osgur. Is, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, can I get your full name and address, please, sir? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. My name is Murat Özgür, and my address is 11 Cassidy Place, Toronto. Well, thank you, sir. If you could give the, uh, we have two other persons registered to speak on this property. If you could give us a brief presentation on what you see are the merits of the proposal. Sure. Uh, the subject property is located on the west of Avenue Road, east of Bathurst Street, and north of Lawrence Avenue and south of Wilson Avenue in Ledbury Park area. So regarding the requested variances, number five, one is about the height of the site exterior main walls. And uh, we are asking 8.54 meters. These are the parts of the building which in the second floor at the, uh, the bedroom window on one side and on the other side, which is the east side elevation, we have another bathroom window and a bedroom window. Regarding number two, is it possible for to show the uh, comparables that I sent for the area? I have a, a, a photo attached here. Murat, we will shows. we will bring those up for you. And in the meantime, Mr. Chair and members, I'd like to bring to your attention that the two um, neighbors that wanted to speak against the file are not on the call. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Wills. And Murat, we're looking for that file for you right now. Thank you. So if you can go all the way to the uh, end of it, I just want to show the uh, sketch that I made that shows the comparables. Yes, this one. So as you can see uh, in the street, 428 Delorain Avenue is approved on uh, December 6, 2018, and has a coverage of 34.88%. 477 Delorain uh, is exact. You can see the photos uh, attached here. Uh, that one is approved on October 20, 2016, with a coverage of 37.5%. And also on the end, the west side of the street, uh, just to summarize, 563 Deloraine Avenue is uh, approved on October 7, 2012, 20, sorry, with a coverage of 35.35%. So, uh, as you can see in my uh, sketch, uh, all these areas, usually they are over uh, 34 and a half then, and also to 37 coverage, they are all approved like that. Regarding number three, uh, that is the uh, porch of the uh, plan. And you can see in the plans that the porch is about six feet and the design of the stairs is facing towards to the driveway. That's why, uh, which is, that one is also the width of the stairs are five feet. So and it's totaling at 11 feet, which makes 3.35 meters into the required front yard setback instead of the 2.5 meters. And number four is the uh, building height uh, of the north north bylaw. And uh, that's the midpoint of the roof. And, but, you know, our top of the roof is 9.97 meters. And we are complying with the bylaw 569-2013. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the uh, thank you? Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Please note that we have uh, no other persons who have re registered to speak on this item. So, if I could get a motion on the application, please. 
Mr. Kidd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I feel the proposed variances are minor and that they meet the four tests for minor variance. Uh, I'd like to put forward a motion to accept the application. Thank you, Mr. Without Kidd. Conditions. Someone to second that? Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved without condition. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you very I think much, this sir. might be a good time to take a break. Come back in uh, 10 minutes.
Ladies and gentlemen, committee's back in session. We are now on item number 29, 96 Dollish Avenue. I have one person, uh, four people registered to speak, and the agent is Babak Gassemi. Are you there, sir? Hello, Mr. Chair. Yes, yes, I'm here. Hello, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, uh, my name is Babak Desemi from Art Lab Design Studio. Uh, we are on 355 Edmonton Avenue West. Okay, sir, I just wanted to, I'm noting uh, you had indicated that you weren't uh, in favor of deferring your application as had been requested by the board councillors, so you were proceeding. With respect to the, uh, I understand you're proposing to delete two variances, number six and seven. Is that correct? Um, Mr. Chair, there's uh, more modifications to our applications. I have to go through the changes to uh, the list of variances. Okay, so before, uh, but before you start, if you're proposing to make changes to your application, can you tell us what those changes are? Yes. So uh, from the uh, notice of the hearing, variance number one is reduced from 1.7 to 1.5 meters. Okay, one point, it goes from 1.70 to 1.50 meters? Yes. Variance number two, it's been reduced. Variance number two is deleted. It's been reduced from 19.3 to 17.47. Okay, so variance number two, the building length is 19.3 meters. That's being reduced to 17.37 meters. 47 meters. 17.47, yes. Okay. Variance number three is removed. Variance number three is deleted. Okay. Variance number four, the FSI is now reduced to 0 0.5, 0 0.56. Okay, zero, from 0 0.60 to 0 0.56 FSI. Variance number five is deleted. Number five is deleted. Variance number six and seven are deleted. Okay, so five, six, and seven are deleted. Variance number eight, the uh, width of the stair is now reduced to 2.2 meters. Okay, from 2.49 meters to 2.2 meters. Right. Variance number nine and 12 are removed. Variance number nine is deleted. Variance number 10, the height of the exterior's uh, main wall height is reduced to 8.05. Okay, 8.66 meters. That's for the 8.05 meters. And I'm going to explain this variance. Uh, that's only for the front portion of the building. Hang on a second. Uh, variance, number variance number 10. Of, so what happens after variance number 10? Variance number 11, does that change? Number 11 is reduced to 1.39. Okay, so from 1.57 meters to 1.39 meters. And variance number 12 is deleted. And 12 stays the same. 12 is deleted. Deleted, yeah. Okay, let me just go through these again and make sure they're correct. we've got them correct. Variance number one goes from one point, uh, the Proposed height of the main pedestrian entrance above established grade is 1.70 meters. That goes to 1.50 meters. Is that correct? Correct. Variance number two, the proposed building length is 19.30 meters. That's reduced to 17.47 meters. Variance number three is deleted. 
Variance number four, the proposed FSI is 0 0.6 times the area of the lot. That's re reduced to 0 0.56. Variances five, six, and seven are deleted. Variance number eight, the proposed width of the front porch stairs is 2.49 meters, is reduced to 2.2 meters. Variance number nine is deleted. Variance number 10, the proposed height of the side exterior main walls facing side lot line is 8.66 meters, been re has been reduced to 8.05 meters. Variance number 11, the proposed front porch is 1.57 meters above established grade, has been reduced to 1.49 meters. And variance number 12 has been deleted. Is that correct? correct. Was variance uh, number yes, just, just to uh, variance number eleven. Number eleven is reduced to one point thirty nine. Variance number eleven. What is it? One point thirty nine. One point three nine, not one point four nine. Yes. So it goes from one point five seven meters above established grade to one point three nine meters above established grade. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, if you could, uh, that's your revised application. If you could give the committee a presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal. So, hello everyone, uh, my name is Babai Kosimi. I'm the uh, designer of Art Lab uh, Studio. Um, we are uh, proposing to uh, build a two-story home with an integral garage. I submitted a, a presentation material earlier today. Um, if I um, we just had a chance to uh, speak to our neighbors uh, over the weekend and come into an agreement. We heard their uh, concerns about some of their variances that uh, uh, we try to accommodate and also uh, come into an agreement. Uh, this uh, proposal that is in front of you reflects all those changes. Uh, our proposal is uh, within uh, what's permitted in the bylaws in terms of front yard setback uh, and side yard setbacks. We only we are only seeking a, a, a minor uh, variance for uh, our billing length. We're asking for 47 uh, centimeters in the rear side of the building. Um, and in terms of FSI, I know there there were some concerns uh, and also miss uh, uh, representations. Um, there was concerns raised by the neighbors. I need to uh, what I need to address to the committee is that we uh, put our garage into our basement in order to just gain more space within, gain more living space. Our uh, our building is within what's permitted in the bylaws. But that extra space that uh, we gained by the garage, which is 400 squ uh, in square feet, uh, adds up to about 4% uh, of extra uh, FSI. So if we had the garage on the main level, our FSI with this proposal would be at 52%. So uh, that FSI uh, uh, is uh, not a great uh, 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 factor for building mass because we don't have any variance. We, uh, our variances are very minor for uh, building uh, length. Also, in terms of uh, the side uh, main wall height, uh, if you can refer to our uh, site elevation. Yes, uh, the previous page. Uh, if we can show our the variance 8.05 meters is only for the front wall. Uh, it's mainly just for the design of the building. The majority of the side wall height on the three sides is going to be 7.7 .7 meters. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? 
Being none, we'll move to the next person on the list. I have Lutz Fulgraf. Are you there, sir? Yes, I am. Yeah, Mr. Fulgraf. Um, again, I'm speaking. Yeah, if you'd like, you've heard that there's been uh, revisions made to the application. The applicant only has six variances and he has deleted six. So if you'd like to uh, make your comments on this revised application. Yes, sir. Um, thank you very much. Um, I, again, I'm speaking for the Lawrence Park Ratepayers Association, address 3219 Young Street, box 239. Um, I heard the um, applicant go through the list of changes to the original variances or the ones that were originally filed. There have been extensive discussion, uh, extended discussions uh, with the applicant by the neighbors. Uh, and um, <clears throat> these revisions came about because of those uh, discussions. I do uh, appreciate the flexibility of the uh, applicants in this respect. Um, we are still concerned about the floor space index of 0.56 because whenever it gets over 0.5, um, we, are con we are concerned and so are the neighbors, but we will not object to that. Um, in light of some of the other uh, concessions that have been made. The only thing that I would like the applicant to uh, please uh, clarify for me, um, I have a list here that the exterior wall height on the on the sides should go from the originally uh, requested 8.66 meters to 8.0 meters. Um, at front and uh, mostly for the most part of the house, only 7.7 .7 meters. You now mentioned a number of 8.05, um, which is is not in line with what we had agreed uh, and probably kept some of the neighbors out of this call so that they will not speak because they thought they had an agreement. Um, I would uh, very much ask the committee to um, not uh, allow an exterior wall height of more than 8.0 meters um, because that was part of the agreement with the applicants. Um, also, the front porch elevation um, on my list that we had agreed with the applicant, it says variance removed. That is variance number 11. He now requests a variance of 1.39 meters instead of uh, 1.2. Again, that that seems to have kept some of the, the neighbors out of this uh, uh, this hearing. Uh, therefore, I would, I don't know how to deal with it, but I, I think um, the best thing would be if we could defer it and then clarify it uh, ultimately um, uh, before we make a decision here. If that's not possible, then, then I have to now say that we would uh, object to uh, the application and uh, because that's not what we had agreed on. And uh, uh, I would like to uh, uh, have the committee refuse the application. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Being none, I'll go to the next person I have on the list. Uh, Leonard C Cinna. Uh, Leonard C. Mack, 57 yes, St. Leonard's Avenue, Toronto. Yes, thank you, sir. Can I? Uh, uh, can I get your full, I'm sorry, your, your address again? Is the 57 St. Leonard's Avenue. Okay, if you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application. Uh, yes, uh, we were uh, canvassed by the uh, owner builder and had, uh, they, they had uh, uh, information that was submitted to the committee, drawings and so on were either inaccurate or extremely sparse. Uh, he, uh, contacted us over the weekend and we spent time uh, talking amongst ourselves and uh, with him um, and uh, had had uh, tentatively agreed to certain changes with Mr. Lutz and I believe the next speaker will speak to. And uh, it was with the understanding in accordance with the owner that he would agree to all those items, uh, but he could not reproduce the drawings uh, and items in time for this meeting. So um, again, we dutifully requested a, a uh, postponement until those that information could be provided. Um, if he does what uh, he said 
and he agreed to do with uh, all five or six of the neighbors. Uh, I would agree with it, but uh, as uh, he seems to have uh, changed some items here at the last minute and not submitted drawings uh, to it, then I would object. Otherwise, object. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Okay, thank you. I'll go to the next person on the list. I have a David Farwell. Mr. Farwell, are you there? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, can I get your full name and address, please? Sure, it's David Farwell, 84 Dollish Avenue, property immediately adjacent to the west of 96 Dollish. Okay, thank you, sir. If you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application, revised application. Thank you, committee. Um, so uh, we, with, I think you have 11 uh, objection letters on file in addition to our own, um, the neighbors objected to uh, the lack of fit with the, the, the surrounding neighborhood, the extent of the variances, uh, and for a lot that really has no hardship. It's a larger than normal uh, lot, 57 by 150, and we didn't see any effort made to fit in with the surrounding area or need for the variances. So that uh, was reflected in my letter on the 21st, including some analysis of the, um, the variances over the past 14 years made possible through the online decision database. Uh, last weekend, as you've heard, uh, we started uh, getting into some back and forth consultation with the owner, uh, Builder, and he agreed to remove seven variances and adjust five of them. Uh, and there's a couple of differences uh, that I want to call out that you're seeing here uh, today. We had a written agreement on uh, the, um, the updated uh, application and the revisions yesterday, and the owner and the architect were to update their plans accordingly. Uh, to get them to us and to the committee. Um, and uh, as of a few moments ago, I've yet to see plans that are, you know, uh, fixed with, uh, that apparently there are still errors uh, in the plans and the variances that are being sought still after our agreement do not reflect, um, you know, the position we landed on with the owner yesterday. Uh, so my main goal is to ensure alignment between our written agreement and what's being applied to currently. I wanted to call out, uh, as uh, Lutz has, um, has summarized, there are two items, variances 10 and 11, which actually do not comply with the written agreement between uh, the neighbors, myself, and um, uh, the applicant. Uh, variance 10, the exterior wall height, um, that was to come in at eight meters, not the 8.05. The second difference, was variance 11 the front porch elevation was to come in um it was actually the variance was to be removed completely um so on this basis um if this is not corrected then our position would be we continue to object to the application uh if the the agreement um you know is fully recognized uh then um you know, while we still have concerns about the uh, floor space index being uh, significantly higher than, than the average homes in the area, uh, in my letter and the variance analysis uh, of 111 homes in, in the surrounding area, 32 variances were sought for, uh, for FSI. The average variance there was 0.538, so that gives you some context. Um, so while we're still concerned about the FSI and also the height of the proposal, um, you know, we acknowledge the efforts to to make some compromises. We're disappointed that those uh, changes and revisions are not fully reflected in what uh, the applicant is seeking from the committee today. Um, and, um, you know, we'd like that corrected. We've also noted some concerns about the, uh, the tree protection and the green space protection in the area. And uh, separately, the owner and I have agreed it to some principles to maintain that on a best efforts basis and to do some replanting that, um, you know, improves on the privacy between the two properties. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, I'll, uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I believe. We have one more speaker. So 
Robert Featherby and Shara Vanya. Are you there? Mr. Chair, um, Robert Featherby and Shara Vaney do not appear to be on the call. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Wills. We'll go back to the agent. Uh, Mr. Gassemi, are you there? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Gassemi, you've heard uh, the comments from the previous speaker, specifically that uh, that you've um, lived up to a, an agreement you had with the residents <laughs> regarding variances number 10 and 11. Um, Mr. Chair, um, yes. So I really appreciate uh, uh, the points uh, being raised uh, uh, by neighbors. I have to say this, these discrepancies were not intentional. Uh, I just, uh, we had a very tight deadline to update the drawings to uh, uh, to what uh, has been agreed. Uh, I would like to request to uh, uh, remove various 11 and amend various number 10 to 8 meters. Again, that's uh, uh, my apologies. It was a uh, uh, okay, miscommunication. Okay, back, sir, sir, back up a second. So you're proposing now to delete variance number 11? Yes. Okay. Variance number 11 is deleted. What about variance number 10? Variance number 10, it will be uh, reduced to 8 meters. Okay, so from 8.66 meters to 8.0 meters. Right. Okay, thank you. Any further changes? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, if you'd like to respond to the other, any other of the comments from the other, uh, from the other speakers. Um, Mr. Chair, we've been working with uh, our neighbors to uh, address all their concerns uh, in terms of trees on site. We're not, uh, we're protecting all the protected uh, uh, trees on site uh, and we'll do uh, uh, all our best to uh, work with our neighbors to, uh, for this uh, project on, uh, on behalf of uh, uh, my client. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Uh, before we get into a motion, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to go through these uh, changes again. There's still quite a few. I want to make sure we've got them right. Variance number one, the main pedestrian entrance above established grade has been reduced from 1.70 meters to 1.5. Variance number two, the building length has been reduced from 19.3 meters to 17.47 meters. Variance number three has been deleted. Variance number four, the floor space index has been reduced from 0 0.60 to 0 0.56. Variances five, six, and seven have been deleted. Variance number eight, which relates to the uh, front porch stairs is being reduced from 2.49 meters to 2.20 meters. Variance number nine is deleted. Variance number 10, which is the proposed height of the site exterior main wall height, that has been reduced from 8.66 meters to 8.0 meters. Variance number 11 has been deleted and variance number 12 has been deleted. So if I could get a motion on that revised application, thank you. Mr. Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I wanna commend both the applicant and the uh, uh, neighbors for the extensive and useful discussions that has resulted in today's uh, presentation. Uh, I would move approval of this uh, and I'm looking for subject twos. 
I think the only concern that I see was a planning staff report that suggested removing variant six, which has taken place. So based well, I, on I, the- I would, uh, I would suggest, Mr. Hunt, that the, probably the city planning report's no longer germane because it's been essentially, everything's been essentially revised and right. in excess of what city planning asked for. All right, then I will move uh, with the changes that you have uh, detailed and identified in terms of the changes and variances, I will move approval of this. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Someone to second Mr. Hunt's motion. Mr. Kidd seconds, all those in favor? That motion carries. Sir, your revised application has been approved without condition. Thank you very much. Item number three. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to bring to your attention that um, Paul Guest has uh, joined the call. And so if you okay, want to go back we'll, to item number 25, we could do that now. Yeah, we'll do that now. Thank you very much, Mr. Wills. No problem. Go back to item number 25. My apologies to everybody. Uh, 81 Bestboro Drive. I have one person registered to speak. That's Paul Guest. Sir, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Uh, I just want, I'm just, oh, good. I noticed that uh, I've gone through your file. There are no recommended conditions or comments from staff on your application. It's pretty clear what you're asking for in the uh, three variants we have before us. Uh, there's mm -hmm. no one else registered to speak on, the, on your application. So I'm just going to ask, sir, is there anything you'd like to tell the committee that the committee doesn't have before it this afternoon or in the file material before us? No, I'm, I'm just here to answer any questions or concerns. Okay. Everything's in the file. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion, please? Mr. Kidd? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, a, a straightforward application. I, I feel that's minor in nature. I'd like to put forward a motion to accept the application uh, without, without condition. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Someone to second that? Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been unanimously approved without condition. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Item number 30. 521 Glengarry Avenue. I have a Chris Marchese. Sir, are you there? Mr. Chair, members, Chris is not currently on the call. It should be noted he did not officially register as well. I noted on his file that he had uh, requested a deferral. I don't know if he still wants to do that. Well, I'll, we'll, I'll, I'll put this one back down to the end of the meeting. If he, if he calls back, Mr. Wills, can you let me know? Item number 31, 34 Overton Crescent. I have one person registered to speak. Uh, that's the agent, uh, Moran Hadari. Are you there? Moran Hadari. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, member of the committee. My name is Mehran Hadari, 1090 Don Mills Road, Unit 506, North Circle, Ontario. Okay, thank you, sir. I just wanted to uh, ask if I note that there are a number of staff comments on this application. There's a report from city planning dated the 21st of April of this year recommending that you reduce variance number two regarding the exterior main wall height from 8.88 meters to eight meters. There's also a letter from Councillor Min and Wong dated the 21st of April of this year, which agrees with planning's recommendation to reduce the main wall heights to eight meters. I wanted to ask, sir, would you like to uh, modify variance number two in accordance with planning's request? Yes, of course. Okay, so variance number two is being changed so that it reads the proposed height of the exterior main walls is 8.8 .8 meters. That's being reduced to 8.0 meters. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, other than that, sir, what you're asking for in the uh, variances we have before us are pretty straightforward. I'll just ask, is there anything that you'd like to uh, 
tell the committee that isn't in the material that we have before us this afternoon? No, everything is uh, there and I'm happy with the application and the staff. And I already met the neighbor on the east and we talked about this application and I also talked with the association agent, uh, Mr. Uh, Brown story and uh, he was fine about my explanation and uh, if there is any question, I'm more than glad to answer. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Chairman, is there someone here to speak? Uh, no, uh, um, Gen Secretary General. The, they, uh, they, they left. Uh, they said, we got an email from them saying they couldn't stay. Okay, could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar. Yes, through you, Mr. Chair, I do believe that this is a, a minor um, application, and so I'll put forward a motion to approve this application. I'll make it uh, subject to the changes um, made by the applicant here today um, in the reduction of variance number two to eight meters, and it will be subject to forestry. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Sankar. Someone to uh, second that? Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been unanimously approved. Uh, subject city planning and urban forestry conditions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 32, 335 Lytton Boulevard. Mr. Chair, before we go on to that one, um, I can confirm actually that um, item number 30, um, oh, it's yeah. not Chris, but it's actually David Engelman, and he is present on the call. Okay, thank you. Go back to uh, item number 30. Uh, sir, is the agent there? I am here. Good afternoon, Sir Chair. Thank you, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? David Eagleman, 900 The East Mall, Suite 300. Okay, thank you, sir. I just wanted to ask, there is some material on file with this application suggesting that... Uh, you were requesting a deferral. Is that still the case? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair, um, through consultation with the City of Toronto planning staff, comments have been provided regarding the application and the client is currently in the process of amending the proposal. Therefore, at this time, we are requesting deferral to allow more time to uh, make amendments to the existing plans, obtain a new zoning review and to submit the revised materials to the Committee of Adjustment prior to having this item heard by committee. Okay, thank you, sir. Can I get a motion on a deferral request? Mr. Hunt? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, based on the request of the uh, applicant, I would move that we defer sine die this application uh, to um, allow them to make amendments to existing plans obtain a new zoning review and to submit revised proposal proposal for the committee of adjustment. Okay, thank you. Someone to second Mr. Hunt's motion. Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries. Sir, your application has been deferred to the next available meeting so that you can meet with uh, city planning and uh, the other associated city departments. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Item number 32, 335 Lighton Boulevard. I have three people registered to speak. No, I'm, pardon me. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people registered to speak. I have the agent, which is Lauren Rose. Are you there, sir? Yes, I am, sir. Okay. Well, thank you, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Lauren Rose, 388 Spadina Road. Okay, thank you. Uh, just asking, sir, uh, there, I'm noting it from looking at your file. We have recommended conditions from urban forestry. There's a report from city planning recommending modifying variance number five with respect to a proposed forest space index uh, to a maximum of 0 0.065 times the area of the lot. The revised application is approved, recommend that the property be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan and east side elevation drawings submitted to the Committee of Adjustment 
attached as attachments one and two to this report. Now, I just wanted to ask, sir, you're currently asking for an FSI of 0 0.712. Uh, does reducing, would reducing your, app, your FSI to 0 .065, 0 0.065, does that essentially require a complete redesign of the project? No, not at all. And I can explain. Um, we've worked well with planning along uh, the process here. I, can, I, can I start or do you, do you want to ask questions? I just want to ask, sir, are, are, you, are you proposing to make modifications to your application? We are not. You're not? We are not. So you're proposing- And I'll explain why. Okay, so you're proposing to go with the proposed floor space index of 0 0.712. Yes. Okay, thank you. If you could give the committee a uh, presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal, please. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll be brief because there are a lot of people who want to speak. Um, so uh, we have we have spoken with planning and worked along uh, the way to get to this. Um, plan, planning, and I've spoken to Sharon, the planner. Planning looks at um, approvals in the area as they should do, and they get hung up on density as the number. That's their only concern here. Um, we have agreed to reduce to the second floor to if the committee approves to 65.7% on two floors. The planner looks at all the decisions in the area um, or a bunch of them in the area and says that the, the average is like 65%. But what she doesn't recognize is that 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 is on two floors. So what we were asking here is to have the extra additional space in the attic. That's all we're asking for. It's 65.7 on the two floors. And why are we asking for that? I'm sure all of us can understand, uh, since we're experiencing COVID, the desire and uh, the ability to have a quiet place to go and work quietly away from your family. We are only asking for a small office on the second floor. Now, uh, in speaking with the counselor's office, they understand you know, I, I am a professional architect and I'm not going to play a game where the builder, we get approved for 65% um, on two floors or whatever, and then they build a third floor illegally, which the counselor talks about people doing. And I said, I'm not, that's not a game that I play. I'm governed by the province of Ontario, and I'm going to legally ask to have space in the attic for a office. Um, the counselor, has written to the neighbors. I reached out to to the counselor uh, last week to see because my na my client did not want to go door to door because of the lockdown and speak to neighbors because they, they didn't think that was politically correct. The counselor has written. I've spoken with the planner on the file and support her recommendations and conditions that will control the massing of the dwelling should the panel approve the application. Well, the density does not control the the massing, and that is my point. Whether I use live in the attic or my client provides space in the attic or not, the massing doesn't change. The, the roof will stay exactly the same. So I see no harm in allowing some space in the attic. The only harm is that someone would use it as precedent. Now, if that's the case, then you have to look at all the precedent in the area. A block away at 239 uh, Courtley, I got 76.6% density and a height of 10.79 meters. Sir, if I could if I could interrupt, remember yeah. that the committee doesn't deal with precedence. Your, your exactly. application has to stand on its own merits. I 100% agree. The issue is that planning works on precedent, and that's their basis for saying it shouldn't be more than 65. But the 65 she's comparing it to is on two floors. Now, the most important thing, if, if staff could put up the area map, uh, if that's possible. If not, it's okay. Because what I want to point out is that one block away and one house to the west is North York bylaw. The North York bylaw allows 35% as of right. So unfortunately, you can't see at the edge of the drawing that that last house on the right edge, left edge, is the last house in Toronto. Every house after that is in North York and is allowed 35% 
density uh, coverage as of right, which is basically 70% density. We're asked our house and coverage is at 36% coverage. There are many houses uh, on that side of the, this block that have, have received 37% coverage all the time, um, which, which would account for 74% density. All I'm trying to say is that the extra space in the attic has no impact on the neighborhood. Massing, length, width, height, none of that will be affected. So with that, I guess I should let um, the neighbors speak um, so we don't hear all day. Yeah, uh, Mr. Rose, can, can I ask? Yes. What would the floor space index be if you didn't include the attic? I said that 65.7. I will point out that my house is not even 17 meters in length if you look at the floor plans. I'm less than that. So I can go through all that on the plans, but but maybe we should let the neighbors speak and I can address their concerns. I'm assuming since planning has no concerns, the councillor has not weighed in on this. Um, you know, the other elements um, of the design okay, okay, are, are thank fine. You, sir. I'll, I'll, I'll go to the, uh, to the other speakers. Thank you. I have uh, Michael Schwegert. Are you there, sir? Mr. Chair and members, uh, Michael is not present on the call. Okay, I'll take him off the list. I have Alyssa Clutterbuck. Are you there? Yes, hello, Mr. Chair and yes, members Ms. of the Clutter committee. Can you can hear I get me? Your, can I get your full name and address, please? Um, my name is Alyssa Clutterbuck. I'm here on behalf of my client, Associated Properties Corp. Um, their address is 326 Lytton Boulevard. Okay, thank you, madam. Thank you. Um, we submit on behalf of our client associated property properties Corp. We were 1 of the, we, we provided a submission, um, objecting to. This minor variance application, and we understand, according to the website of the city that there are 15 letters of objection total. Um, our clients property 326 Litton Boulevard is situated across the road from the applicants property. Um, I'd like to make brief submissions on why we think that the variance application is not minor and we've reviewed the plans um, dated March 31st uh, of this year. So, in our submission, the requested variances represent overdevelopment of the property and set a dangerous precedent. The proposed architectural design of the home based on the plans does not fit with the character of Lytton Boulevard and the surrounding neighborhood. As you've as you've taken the applicant um, through the proposed FSI is more than double the currently permitted FSI of, of 0 0.35 and I would submit that the applicant's explanation is not valid. Even the city's own staff report recommended a lesser FSI as a compromise. Furthermore, the proposed length setback of the east side lot and and the setback of the front yard are not appropriate and do not respect and reinforce the existing physical character of the neighborhood as is required by section 4.1.5 of the city's official plan. Um, specifically with respect to policies enumerated in section 4.1.5, the proposed variances do not reinforce prevailing heights, scale and density of nearby residential properties setbacks of buildings from the street or streets, patterns of rear and side yard setbacks and landscaped open spaces. If that we submit that if the committee permits this level of density on the property, it does create a precedent for further density on Lytton, Lytton Boulevard, which is incompatible with um, the neighborhood character. And so as a result, we would submit that the application does not meet the four part test under section 45. Cumulatively, the variances are not minor. It would they would result in a development that is not desirable from a planning or public interest perspective in that they do not conform with the character of the neighborhood and they do not maintain the general intent and purpose of either the zoning bylaw or the city's official plan. And those are my submissions. I thank you. Okay, thank you, madam. I was just madam. I just want to ask you a question. I was curious about your comment that the architecture didn't blend in with the street. Uh, what part of the architecture doesn't blend in with the street? I, I can see it's a mansard roof. And other than the third floor dormers, there is a number of properties on this street that have mansard roofs. 
But yes, Mr. Yeah. Chair, I, I, I apologize for not being clear there. I was referring specifically there to the FSI being so much more than what is currently permitted and that creating a dangerous precedent with respect to density from the um, we would have if this if if this were eventually appealed, we would have a plan or look at it in more detail. But from our preliminary review, we felt that the FSI requested would would be such a large change that it would alter it would alter the look of the the proposed uh, the the drawing if it was uh, developed as such. If can I ask if they didn't have the third floor uh, habitable attic, would there be an objection to the application? It's hard to say without without um, without drawings to support that. Um, the I understand the applicant's explanation, and I. I, I I was actually, um, I think our position would be, we'd be much more willing to accept the applicant's position if they were willing to come down to 0.65 in the city staff report, but um, it doesn't seem that they're willing to do so. So um, we would say no, that that as of, as from what we've heard, that does not satisfy us. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Being none, we'll go to our next person on the list. I have an, Aiden Nabavati or Hanny Bast, are you there? Mr. Chair, neither of them are on the call. Okay, thank you. I have next person on the list is Charles Copel. Are you there? Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Yes, it's Charles Coupel, spelled C O U P is in Peter A L. And thank I you. own 333 Lytton Boulevard. Thank you, sir. Can I? Uh, can you uh, give us your thoughts on this application, please? Yes, uh, I oppose the application because of the huge building height. Part of that is aggravated by the, the, the uh, occupiable attic. Also, the length and the depth variances, as well as the 40% requested reduction in east side setback, which will greatly increase the level and duration of flooding that include, occurs both inside my garage and backyard, and that's every year for more than a decade. Any proposed cut to the east side setback will also guarantee more severe future flooding into the west side of my S own sir, basement. Sir, but if I could add, the committee doesn't deal with drainage issues. Just to let you know, if the application is approved, it has to go to the building department, and the, applica uh, the applicant has to submit a lot grading plan that shows that all his storm water is being managed on his own property. So, I see. So, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, may I continue? Yes. Uh, the darkening of all south facing rooms in my house from early afternoons onward will result from the huge increase in ground coverage proposed by the developer and will reduce the future enjoyment of my home and value. Uh, my next door neighbors east of me uh, share that concern. They're unable to speak today, but have asked me to mention their concerns. Uh, the application shows little respect for city bylaws and nearby homeowners who care about the value and privacy of their property future well-being of the neighborhood. The burdensome, the variances that are most burdensome to me are the proposed FSI of decimal 712 is a huge 103% above the city's bylaw limit of 0 0.35 and will dwarf the surrounding homes within our streets block. The uh, reduction of the east side setback by 40% percent uh, really uh, compromises my property's privacy and the dark shadowing of all of the south facing rooms of my home from early afternoon on. Uh, the extra 3.45 meters to the south property line of the proposed house plus an unneeded pool will greatly uh, uh, impede on my personal privacy as a homeowner. Mr. Chairman, I thank you for and your colleagues for li 
listening. I earnestly ask that you reduce the most egregious thought variances and in particular uh, deny any reduction of the east side setback to less than the city's required 1.5 meters. Thank you for listening. Thank you, sir. Any questions of the speaker? Being none, we'll go to our next speaker. I have a Dan Singer. Are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can I get your full name and address, please? Uh, my name is Dan Singer, and I'm the owner of 332 Lytton Boulevard in Toronto. Okay, if you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application, please. Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, I, I think the important thing here is we're not one or two minor variances or really that there's anything minor about these variances taken as a whole. There are 11 variances and quite a few of them are really egregious in my humble opinion. Um, I, I, well, I guess I, I don't want to go through too much of the a repeat on the previous uh, speaker's points, but uh, I agree wholeheartedly with what he's just said, and I'll just say quickly, the, the FSI of 7.712, 103% above the bylaw seems outrageous. Uh, the length of the house going back three, almost three and a half meters, 3.45 meters further than the bylaw, 24% further back. Um, it's just such an impediment on the neighbors. It's, it's really a bit outrageous. And then, you know, the setback on the east side, the 0.9 meters versus the 1.5 required. And finally, one, one additional point that wasn't mentioned by the previous speaker, uh, the front steps, they significantly encroach into the front yard and exceed the permitted width by 119%, 4.37 meters versus the two meters that are permitted. Uh, overall, I, I just I can't see how this would would meet the test, the four part test. And uh, there's certainly there, the scale of this home does not respect and reinforce the existing physical character of the neighborhood. I'm also gravely concerned about the potential to set negative precedents for this neighborhood. This neighborhood, we've been owners here for only three years, but the reason we chose it was for its uh, you know, reasonable scale of development, uh, lots of green space, uh, and a you know peaceful neighborhood with with lots of green space between homes that will be significantly impacted by this. I have just one final comment, which is that the the applicant, uh, Mr. Rose, he made a comment that the owner didn't want to go door to door due to COVID. I find that hard to swallow. He had many weeks, uh, about two months from the time of his application, I believe. And not once did somebody send a letter, um, approach the, the neighbors in any way, shape or form. There was one email sent by some third party late yesterday. Um, and that was it. I, I don't think that's a, a reasonable level of um, uh, involvement and engagement with the neighbors. And frankly, I find it quite disrespectful and it's a, a lame excuse, in my opinion, with all due respect. Uh, those are my comments. Okay, thank you, sir. Any questions of the thank speaker? You. Being none, we'll go to our next speaker. I have a Daniel Greenberg. Are you there, sir? Mr. Chair, Daniel is present, but he did email me a little while ago saying he was willing to give up his moment of, to speak. Um, okay. In light of some of the changes, though, or, or, or lack thereof, maybe he does still want to speak, so we'll just call him anyways and... I'll call him in again. Uh, Daniel Greenberg, are you there? I am, but I haven't. Yes, Mr. Greenberg, if you'd yes. like to uh, tell us, can I get your full name and address? Mr. Chair, as a reminder, he doesn't actually want. I he am did, here. He did suggest he wanted to not speak anymore. Oh. So if he just just yeah, I am us. here. Okay, thank you, Mr. Greenberg. I go to our next speaker on the list. I have a Igor Serenak. Mr. Serenak, are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. If you can give us your full name and address, please. Sure. Good afternoon and thank you for the opportunity to share my concerns. My name is Igor Saranak and I'm the owner of 339 Litton Boulevard. Immediately adjacent property on the west side and speaking today on behalf of my family. 
While some of the requested 11 variances seem minor in nature when looked at individually, they become major when looked at in their totality. Proposed house will be by far much wider, much taller, much longer, and much closer to property lines all around than anything else on our street. Our primary concerns are with the excessive FSI. Per staff report suggests the reduction from requested 0.712 to 0.65 still exceeds every house on this block. Proposed length, which is almost three and a half meter in excess of the permitted length, and the proposed height of 10.67 meters, whereas the permitted height is 10 meters. The most significant issue for my family is the fact that this dwelling with the main structure come more than two meters beyond our rear wall, plus the one story bump out on the same side. So length of the house on the west side, along with this bump, has a direct adverse impact on the use and enjoyment of our property. There will be no privacy in our backyard, as the rear of the house will extend well beyond our rear wall and will be very close to our property line. The excessive building length, height, and depth variances, if approved, will significantly reduce the light and area between the buildings. And because of the one story bump out on the west side of the house, it will completely remove privacy by introducing an overview to our rear yard and destroying mature cedars currently between our two properties. This application violates specifically official plan, Chapter 4, Policy 5, development criteria and neighborhoods. Clearly, based on all these requested variances, proposed development will not be materially consistent in terms of the height, length, and scale with the prevailing physical character of properties in both the broader and immediate context. Hence, per this policy, in instances of significant difference between these two contexts, the immediate context will be considered to be of greater relevance. We expressed our concerns early by submitting a letter of objections, along with 15 others, including every property that connects with 335 or is in immediate proximity. Immediate three houses on the west side, immediate two on the east side, immediate four facing south, and connecting and three connecting via backyard. All directly affected. In closing, we are open for dialogue. I wish we had an opportunity to discuss these concerns with the owner of architect in advance of this meeting. There was no such an outreach until late yesterday afternoon via email from the office of city councilor. I wonder if city council reached out to architect to reach out to us. However, we didn't hear from owner or architect until basically to that. At this meeting. A few years ago, when we built our house, we followed these principles and in line with the same bylaws as for variances, where still same FSI of 0.35 was valid, we shared our plans in advance, recognized concerns of our neighbors, and reduced FSI, which was approved here at 0.55, which is still 20% less than what staff recommends today at 0.65. I hope committee will follow the same principles and apply the same rules this time as you did when we were in front of you no long ago. And finally, the variances are not minor nor desirable, do not respect the intent of the zoning bylaw nor the official plan. Hence, we ask the committee to refuse this application and to disallow all various requests relating to FSI, depth, and height. Thank you. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? That's our last speaker. I'll go back to Mr. Rose. Are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, yes I am. Thank sure you. You've heard the comments from the previous speakers. If you'd like to reply to them, please. Yeah, um, I, I will say that um, although uh, the Elisa for 326 said there were 15 letters of objection, there are not. Many of the letters were duplicated on the file. I don't know what happened, but they, the first four letters, I think, were duplicates. Uh, I reached out to the counselor. Uh, my, so first of all, my client did say he was going to go and talk to people. He did not. That was wrong. But in light of lockdown, it's not. If someone came to my door, I wouldn't want them to be there. We reached out to the counselor because we nobody in the street put their ad their their contact information. I reached out to the counselor a week ago. 
We spoke in depth. She said she would, uh, the counselor's assistant, um, she would get back to me. Uh, I called her yesterday yeah. to say what's going on. At, you know, I haven't been able to contact anyone. Uh, she did send out a letter yesterday. And I did speak to several of the people through email. The majority of their concerns were about drainage and about light. Uh, two things that the committee of adjustment does not deal with. However, I did tell the neighbor at 333. Uh, I live in this neighborhood and I know it's full of clay soil. I put two huge drainage pits in my backyard. And in the spring, my, my property is the only one that's not under water when, when, when the, the thaw happens. I would uh, undertake that we would do something similar here. To go through the comments from uh, 326, um, I take them with a grain of salt because she said that the FSI creates uh, something architecturally that's not uh, in character with the neighborhood. As uh, the chairman mentioned, uh, the exterior of the house doesn't change whether I have that FSI in the, the third floor or not. FSI density is not a barometer of impact on the neighborhood. It's just a number. As you said, you don't work on precedent. That is true, but the planning department does. Uh, Mr. Kobol at 333 talked about height. You'll note that there's a, uh, if you can put, if staff can put up um, my drawings, um, they can do that. I will say that there is a variance. Uh, if we go to the uh, an, an elevation, there is a variance under the old bylaw for height. And that's only because if you look at the top, um, the top of the, here you see it has a 2% slope on the top. If I were to make that a 10% slope, there would be no variance under the old bylaw. The new bylaw is under appeal. So to say that it's not in keeping with it with height, um, yes, the, the bylaw that is um, governing the new bylaw, by which is under appeal, um, uh, it is in keeping with other developments in the areas. As I said, I reached, I achieved 10.79 um, at uh, the property and in, uh, in street behind. Um, the flooding issue we can take care of. Um, if, if staff can put up the site plan, please. Uh, so you'll see that both adjacent neighbors have 1.2 meter side yard setbacks. The neighbor at uh, 339 actually has less. He's probably 0.9 meters. We are asking for 0.9 meters. And, and, and if you choose to approve it, uh, I would suggest, uh, where is it that you have it? It's for the, uh, only for the garage for the first 7.29 meters. Then we will go to 1.2 meters, which matches what the neighbors have on either side, um, if you choose to approve it. Um, as well, the existing house has a fully paved driveway with a detached garage. We are moving the house closer, that is true, but we're getting rid of all of that asphalt. So there will now be uh, permeable uh, soil, whatever, between our house and the neighbor who's concerned about flooding. But again, that's not an issue for here because we do have to prove that we are maintaining our own um, water. Uh, if, uh, if, if staff can put up the basement plan. Sir, you have 20 seconds. Can you summarize? Oh, sorry. Okay, well, yeah. I mean, the, the length that we're asking for is only because the basement porch is excavated. Uh, if staff can put up the first floor plan quickly, sorry. You'll see we're permitted to be 17 meters. You'll see that we're 16.79. And that's not including the one story uh, little thing at the front, the bay at the front. Okay, thank and you, the sir. Story at thank the you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? Ms. Sankar? Yes, three, Mr. Chair. You know, I've looked at this uh, application carefully and I've, I've heard what uh, the applicant has said. 
But I feel that uh, with all of the speakers who have spoken, um, I, I feel that there's some very valid points that were absolutely raised. And instead of trying to redesign the application in such a way that will sort of meet their needs right now, I cannot do that. Um, I'm weighing on the side to refuse this application. I am not comfortable with going ahead on any type of approval and sort of redesigning this. So my motion is to refuse. I have a motion from Ms. Sankar to refuse the application. Can I get someone to second that motion? Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries, sir. Your application has been refused. Uh, now on item number 33, 23 Sandfield Road. Mr. Chair, before we get going, I want to bring to your attention that uh, the, um, the unknown area neighbor uh, registered as Mr. L.C. Lee does not appear to be on the call, yet there is someone on the name Liz Lee. We can give him a try when we get to that chance, if you'd like, otherwise... Oh, uh, are Mr. Wills, are they there now? Um, uh, more to the point about Liz Lee, if that is in fact the, the person we're here, um, they, they did not authorize their microphone, and so they cannot be muted or unmuted. Oh, okay, all right. We'll, uh, we'll, I have, okay, we're on item number 33, 23 Sandfield Road. I have two people registered to speak. Uh, I have Mr. Romano. Mr. Romano, are you there? Oh, one moment. There we go. Mr. Chair, as a reminder, though, the, uh, the, the Mr. L. C. Lee is not present on the call. Okay, then. Thank you. Is Mr. Franco Romano there? Yes. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Franco Romano here, 2095 Autumn Breeze, Poor Credit. Yes. Hi, Mr. Romano. I have. Uh, I note that there. Are the only comments we have from staff on your application are from urban forestry. They have a recommend the standard recommended condition. Other than that, uh, what you're asking for <clears throat> in the five variances are pretty straightforward. I'm just going to ask the uh, ask you if there's anything like that you'd like to tell the committee that uh, isn't in the material that we have before us this afternoon. Just to. Uh, um clarify that the second variance that deals with that portion of the building depth in excess of 17 meters is only for a one story sunroom that is uh, about 4.75 meters in height. So other than that, the uh, I believe the variances are pretty straightforward. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Romano. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? <laughs> Mr. Kidd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to uh, put forward a motion to accept the application. I feel the uh, requested variances are uh, 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 of a minor nature. And um, I'd like to make it subject to uh, forestry condition. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Someone to second Mr. Kidd's motion? Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? A motion carries unanimously. Mr. Romano, your application has been unanimously approved subject to urban forestry conditions. Thank you kindly. Appreciate your kind attention and your patience for the day. Uh, thank you, sir. Day. Thanks for waiting. Item Thanks. number 34, 261 Codsell Avenue. I have three people registered to speak. And uh, the agent is an Osrin Stambook. Are you there, sir? Yes, I'm here. Can I get your full name and address, please, sir? Sure, it's Ozren Stambuk. I'm at 1410 Dupont Street, uh, Unit 905. Thank you, sir. I, I note in your file that there are no comments or recommendations from city staff. We do have two other persons who have expressed an interest on this application. Mm -hmm. So if you could uh, give us a very brief uh, justification for why we should approve your variances. Sure, absolutely. So um, we have in front of us, uh, and thank you, Mr. Chair, we have in front of us uh, basically an application 
that has been um, in some ways designed around this uh, double car garage. And it has, it has uh, pushed the side variances because uh, otherwise we could not have the, the appropriate setbacks with a, a double car garage. And that was of central importance to the owner. And um, otherwise the rest of the variances just fall into line uh, around the central garage and making an appealing and, uh, and kind of feasible layout. Now, um, there is one thing I'd like to mention is that I actually did go through an extensive uh, back and forth email chain with uh, Michael Romero, he's a city planner. And uh, he asked me to change one of the variances actually. Um, are, are you guys, uh, is the committee at all aware of this? So are you proposing to make a change to your application? Yeah, I'm, I'm proposing to make the change, but I'm surprised that uh, this, this kind of uh, communication that I, I had with planning isn't on file. But uh, basically, I would like to remove variance number five, so there's no longer any height variance under the new bylaw. Okay, so uh, just to, to you're, you're proposing to remove the uh, variance number five, which currently reads the proposed building height is 10.4. And you're uh, you want to delete that? Yes, yes. Okay. As as has been as has been requested. I certainly don't want to delete it, but but it's been requested, and and we listen to what it says. Okay, thank you. So you're going forward with uh, six variances instead of seven. That's right, and even even the um, North York height bylaw will be reduced, but I don't have that exact number for you. So you can even consider that variance number seven will not be eliminated, will be reduced. But uh, the planner was not concerned about the North York height bylaw. So in any case, so um, just to get back to it and to wrap it up really quickly, um, uh, I'm 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 very much looking forward to hearing uh, whoever else is on the file. And, and that basically, um, so what, what I thought here is we have a very sensible design around a two car garage. And, and that kind of resulted in a lot of the variances. And, and we tried to keep them under control. And of course, based on planning's comments, we've also removed the height variance. Okay, thank you, sir. So just thank to you. summarize, the only change you're making to your application is by deleting variance number five, am I correct? Yes, you're correct. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Mr. Hunt? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have a, uh, a series of uh, email exchanges between Mr. Just looking at the map. Mr. Romero and the gentleman from Stanbrook Homes. That's me. Okay, so uh, what I see on this file, you were going to ask the owner if he is okay with changing the roof slope to 11, to 11 instead of 12 to deal with the height issue yes and then this goes on to say okay the only way we can comply with the new bylaw height is to reduce the roof slope slightly i will await the owner's decision and send you final plans asap and then uh, Michael said, thanks, also provide the specific numerical changes in your email response. Then what I have here is here so, the uh, revised uh, Mr. Hunter, are you asking if he's proposing to change the, uh, the height variance under the old North York bylaw? Well, I'm, I'm going only by what I see in the email exchange and it, it speaks to Maximum building height and yes, maximum building height. 
He's gone from 10.4 meters to 10 meters, and yeah, he, the no, but Mr. Hunt, he's deleted variance number five. Okay, then the maximum permitted building height is 8.8 .8 meters. The proposed building height is 9. That's that's under the old feet. North York bylaw. Right, and that's been modified to now to 8. Well, well, let, let's confirm. Let's confirm that, uh, sir. Are you there, Mr. Stanbuck? Are you there? Yeah. Yes. Are you proposing to make a change to variance number seven, which is the height uh, variance not, under bylaw 7625? Right. So I'm not proposing to change that. And the only reason is, is because when we reduce the main wall height to 10 meters, the, the main roof height to 10 meters, it's going to naturally result in a reduction of the North York height bylaw. And the reason I don't want to put it, uh, I put a number to it in the email, but I'm just reluctant to change it right now in case there was any kind of mistake, then that's going to be problematic for us later on. So I do even have a number for you. Okay. But, but um, yeah. Okay, okay sir, You're just a simple yes or no or do, will do. Are you proposing to change variance number seven? No. Okay, that's okay. The only one that's being deleted is variance number five. Yes. Okay, thank you. Any further questions of the speaker? Being none, I'll go to the next person on the list. Mr. Chair and members, both uh, area residents are not on the call. Okay. I'll go to the next person, Ian Calhoun. No, no, sorry, both. Both. Of no them. one is present on. Both of them are not there. Okay, thank you, Mr. Wills. Uh, okay, uh, committee members, there are no persons here to speak in interest on this revised application. Please note that variance number four, with relate, which relates to the proposed building height under bylaw 569-2013, that variance has been deleted. So if I could get... Variance number five, yes. Variance number five has been deleted. Uh, the, and the other variances, one, two, three, four, six, and seven remain as is. So if, uh, can I get a motion on the revised application, please? Ms. Sankar? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I accept this, ap uh, this application uh, in the format uh, that has been uh, submitted and with the changes made uh, that you've already declared um, with um, before my motion. So I'll motion to approve this application and subject to forestry with the changes that you've outlined. Uh, Ms. Sanker, we have no forestry conditions on this one. Oh, sorry. I thought. Okay, maybe I'm I I've misrecorded that. Sorry no about that. So I'll I'll take that out. Someone to second Miss Sankar's motion. Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? Uh, okay, that motion carries unanimously, sir. Your your revised application has been unanimously approved without condition. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Item number thirty-five. I have seven people registered to speak. Uh, I have the agent Babak Kasami. Are you there, sir? Hello, Mr. Chair. Yes, I'm here. Yes, hello, sir. I wanted to ask. Uh, I note that there are a number of uh, there's a, some comments from staff on this application. There's one from city planning dated the 21st of April of this year. It's recommending refusing variances number four and five regarding the front and rear main wall height. And uh, it's also, there's also a letter from Councillor Min and Wong dated the 21st of April that recommends refusing the application as well. In view of these comments, sir, would you like to defer the application to discuss these issues with city planning? Um, Mr. Chair, um, I have reviewed all the comments and we addressed uh, some of the changes. I would like to make a change to our proposal uh, and to our variances. Okay, so what are you proposing to change? So I, I take it you don't want to defer, you'd like to uh, your application heard today? 
Yes, please. Okay, so what changes are you proposing to make to your application? We are reducing the front main, main wall height to 8.66 And what, meters. What, what, what variance is that one, sir? Variance number four. Okay, variance number four, which is the proposed height of the front main Mr. Babak, now is not the time to be making uh, on the fly decisions. Mr. Babak, sir, Mr. Babak, sir, can please you one have respect for the committee. This council right now. Mr. Chair, that's not uh, me. It's not, I think the mic for someone else is was on. Okay, well. So can you tell me what what variances are you proposing to change? Yes, sir. Uh, variance number phone is four. Uh, I would like to reduce that variance to eight point sixty six meters. Okay, hang on a second. It's nine point one seven meters now, and you're proposing to change it to which? Eight point six six meters. Okay. What's the next one you want to change? Variance number five, I would like to reduce the rear main wall height to 8.48 so meters. It's 9.17 meters now, and you're proposing to reduce it to what? 8.48 meters. 8.48 meters. Any other changes? And variance number 12, the proposed building height, we would like to reduce it from 9.41 to 9.26 meters. Okay, so from 9.41 meters to 9, 9 point which? 26. 9.26 meters. Okay, so to summarize, variance number four gets changed. It currently reads the proposed height of the front main walls is 9.17 meters or 100% of the total width of the all front main walls. That's being changed from 9.17 meters to 8.66 meters. Variance number five, the proposed height of the rear main walls is 9.17 meters or 100% of the total width of all the rear main walls. That gets reduced to 8.48 meters. Variance number 12, under the old North York bylaw, the proposed building height is 9.41 meters. That's being reduced to 9.26 meters. Is that correct? Is that correct, sir? 9.26 correct, yes. Okay, so if you could give us, give the committee a uh, presentation on what you see are the merits of your revised application, please. Uh, yes, sir. If I can ask the staff to... Uh, up, uh, Put up our presentation material that was uh, submitted uh, earlier today. Uh, there's another, uh, yes, thank you. Sorry, but back. Just you could continue there. Yes. So uh, I have to mention uh, um, our proposal. Uh, what uh, what we're trying to propose is to build uh, is to build a two-story uh, detached dwelling. I have to mention that that there was a typo in the zoning examiner's uh, notice that I think raised a huge concern in the area. Uh, if you can pull up our site uh, uh, elevations, uh, I would like to show that to, to committee what the reason for all the concerns are. Um, page uh, A202, please. Yes. So the way that the zoning examiner, I think, uh, made a mistake, uh, uh, our main wall height, uh, she wrote that uh, our rear main wall height was uh, the same as the front, which that was not the case. However, we received the, we, uh, we saw the concerns 
from the neighbors in the area. We made a modification to the proposal to reduce the overall massing, to reduce the overall height of the uh, sidewall heights. Uh, as you can see, uh, the reason for uh, that uh, sidewall height mainly is for the design of the uh, dwelling. We are seeking a modern design. Uh, in terms of the overall proposal, our, we don't have any variance for side yard setbacks, uh, front yard setbacks, or rear wall setbacks. Our building is within uh, the uh, what's being approved uh, widely in the area. I'll be happy to uh, answer uh, any questions. Okay, thank you, sir. Any questions okay, of the sir. speaker? Any questions of the speaker? And being none, we'll go to our next person on the list. I have a Liz Lee. Are you there? Yes. Can you Ms. hear me? Ms. Lee, can I get your Hello? full name and address, please? Yes, it's Liz Lee. The address is 60 Norden Crescent. Our property is to the west of the proposed house, and we are the most impacted by this application. Okay, if you'd like to give um, us your views first on item, okay. The first item that I wanted to discuss is in relation to the west side yard setback and um, item number four and five. Um, the, the reduction in variance that they have requested in four and five are insignificant. Um, we are most impacted by the compounding effect of all of these variances since we are being squeezed on the west side setback for 40% of the new building. The close proximity of the walls in combination with the height and coverage variances of the building further emphasizes the overwhelming impact of the wall. The developer has burdened the west side property dispor disproportionately when there is more space on the east side of the lot. The intent of a minor variance is in order to address hardship. This is a large lot size and a large building can be built on a clean slate that enables a design that is within the bylaws. My question is, what are the hardships that required the need for relief for this house based on a clean slate on a large lot? There has been no effort made by the developer or the owner to consult the abutting neighbors or the neighborhood before the submission. It maximizes the owner's benefit without consideration of the adjacent neighbors. We request that they comply with the variance number seven, as well as four and five, in order to mitigate the overwhelming impact and to align with the streetscape and neighborhood and its intended purpose as outlined in the official plan and bylaws. And to reinforce what the councillor has said is that it is um, to refuse this, this application. Please note that um, we have significant concern regarding the privacy and the uh, domestic noise level. And this is given the fact that you have a very large front patio that's elevated five feet above grade, as well as a seven foot wide back deck that's elevated seven and a half feet above grade. This in combination with the five large windows on the west wall severely impact our privacy and raise concerns regarding the domestic noise level. These issues are magnified given their closer proximity, the height of the building and the coverage which results in overlooking the entire back of our home, our side yard and front yard which results in exposure of 75% of our property. Given the last 16 months dealing with COVID-19 and the lockdown further emphasizes the level of importance of domestic privacy and having spatial distance between the properties. Again, we request that they comply with the West Yard side setback as well as the height variance requirements and to separately address the privacy concerns. We would also request clarification on the first floor height variance and whether that was missed. Uh, based on bylaw 569-2013, 10.10.40.10, section six, it specifies that the permitted maximum height of the fourth, first floor above the established grade is 1.2 meters. The proposed 
dwelling is has a height of 1.5 meters above the established grade. This further contributes to the overall height of the building that results in the overshadowing wall along the west side. Our concern is if, if the committee chooses to approve this variance that it will set a planning precedence where very high basements effectively resulted in an unintended three-story house in a two-story neighborhood. We feel that development has not been respective of the existing residential neighbors given the lack of effort in consulting with the adjacent neighbor as well as in, uh, the other residents within the neighborhood. Um, if the committee approves this, we would request that redesign considerations are made to address the significant privacy impacts on us. Again, we are concerned that this application will set a planning precedence of overdevelopment of large lot sizes without any effort being made to comply with the bylaws, which is not reflective of the true intent and the purpose of minor variances and the intent of the official plan and bylaws. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Lee, I just wanted to ask you a question. With regard to that west side yard setback, the variance is 1.18 meters, but it, have you seen the site plan? Because it actually, it's only for a very narrow part of the wall. The rest of it flares out to it's in excess of two meters. Yes, they also have a, a requested a variance on, on the roof east to extend out 1.18 meters. Um, they also, the architectural feature also protrudes out two feet. So the overall impact is that that overhang results in reducing um, the distance from the perimeter for about, um, approximately, I guess, overall, uh, the physical impact is, is less than a foot. So it, it creates an overwhelming 38 foot high wall that's 36 feet long. And then when you add in the elevated front porch, which is, you know, five and a half, five, five and a half feet wide and less than 30 feet long. Um, you and under, then you the understand elevation that, of the, that the, uh, the overall height of the building complies with the bylaw. The physical impact and the proximity yeah, yeah. of the side wall is quite imposing. It could be, madam, but it, it complies with the bylaw. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions of the speaker? I have a next speaker, Gordon and Mary Payne. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, it's Gordon Payne. We live at uh, 30 Norton Crescent. And we are the home that immediately backs on to 62 North uh, Norton Crescent. Okay, thank we you. We have sent a letter. You can tell, give us your thoughts on this application, please. Okay. We have sent in a letter of objection that you have on file, but we want to emphasize the following points. Fundamentally, we believe that the proposed dwelling is oversized for this lot. This and the proposed design of the dwelling itself has resulted in 12 variances of bylaw, as we know. And we believe that the size and scale of the proposed um, dwelling should be scaled back so that all property line setbacks as set out in the bylaws be respected. We're making that comment to support the position that Liz just presented to you. Our personal main concern is the proposed uh, height of the building. We strongly believe that the overall dwelling height by law should be respected. We do note the city planning staff's report of April 21st, which recommended that variants four and five be refused. And we have heard the applicant uh, adjust those numbers so that they would not be as, as tall. However, we still think that the uh, bylaw itself should be respected and uh, we don't see any reason why it should be different. Um, we believe that that would result in a lower uh, overall height of the dwelling itself. 
we're not sure why the city city planning staff report doesn't make any comments with respect to the overall proposed dwelling height. So that's a that's a question and a concern that we're kind of putting out there because if we focus on the wall height only, uh, we uh, are concerned about what that impact would be on the overall building height. We also note uh, that the height being requested on the application, uh, which was 9.41, I know that's been changed now, and the height shown on the drawing, um, and the, on the drawing it was 9.49 meters. And we notice that that's different and we're not quite sure why. So in summary, we value the privacy of the back of our house. We realize that a two-story dwelling could be built in that lot behind us. We, we, we kind of, uh, we, we understood that was going to be a possibility, but we do not want to see one that exceeds the current bylaw height. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? Being none, we'll go to our next speaker on the list. I have an Adela Chung. Are you there? Hi, yes. Yes, can uh, I get my your husband... full name and address, please? Yeah, it's Adela Chung, and we're at 64 Norton Crescent. My husband, William Liu, will speak on our behalf. Okay, thank you, madam. If you could give us your concerns with the application. Hi, Chairman. It's uh, William Liu here. Um, speaking on behalf of my wife and myself, we're the Sasset 64 Northern Crescent on the east side abutting the property in question. Um, we do have a several more concerned residents in our neighborhood that will be speaking, so I don't really want to duplicate any points, but certainly thank you so much for your time and I know I realize it is getting late in the evening into dinner time. Uh, we are certainly concerned about the numerous setbacks, uh, all 12 of them been told. Um, specifically concerning um, the west side setback, uh, we are um, concerned about variance number three. And uh, as Liz, our first speaker, was concerned about was number 11. This, these reference the canopy. Uh, that extends into the property line beyond the 1.8 meter setback. Um, the drawings uh, that we reviewed are a little deceiving with respect to the east side, specifically, specifically referencing uh, diagrams um, A200. Uh, that front view uh, shows the garage actually extending out. And I'm not sure if variance three, uh, which says the canopy references the garage portion as well. Uh, if it doesn't, I mean, these are just architecture features only. They do not have any functionality. They do not provide any livable space. It makes the width of the building quite massive with minimal spacing between uh, our properties. Um, the Canopies diagrams are A101 and A102, I believe. Um, so I'll leave it to uh, your uh, review to see whether or not that garage section and essentially the whole side of the house really is, you know, massing into our uh, house next door. Our second concern is uh, I'm not sure if forestry has been contacted with uh, regards to this uh, design. The, uh, there are certainly many mature trees on the uh, east side of the house that would be significantly impacted, uh, perhaps, perhaps even uh, removed. And uh, that would be certainly a concern for us as they are. Uh, we do like to keep the green space uh, as much as possible in our neighborhood. Um, Finally, with regards to uh, variance uh, 169, which addresses the porch and the stair widths, I believe this uh, developer did agree to another property that was held uh, earlier to make a concession with the regards to the 2.0 meter um, stair width. And in variance 9, it's currently 2.44 meters. So I was just wondering if the uh, the same developer would uh, be agreeable to uh, 
make his stair width a little bit smaller as he has agreed to in a, another property in our neighborhood. Um, and just making the whole design and the uh, the architectural uh, reaches a little bit more pleasing to um, you know our our street. Uh, we're certainly open to uh, looking at something uh, that he could come up with. Uh, but uh, hopefully uh, he would be agreeable to uh, make some concessions on these. Uh, again, thank you very much for your time. I won't speak any further as we still have uh, many uh, others to speak. Okay, thank you, sir. Any questions of the speaker? Next speaker on the list, I have a Stuart Hopkins and Nancy Wynott. Are you there? Mr. Chair, before we go on them, um, we have a William Liu. Yeah, that was just him. I apologize. Stuart Hopkins and Nancy Wynott. Okay, uh, Stuart Hopkins here. Yes, thank you. Can I get your full name and address, please? Uh, Stuart Hopkins, 53 Norton Crescent. Yes, sir, if, if I could add, flip, please don't repeat material that's already been said. We don't need to hear it. Three times. Absolutely. Um, my additional concerns to the previous that were um, uh, noted on there. Uh, the general look of the the house and the uh, sort of modern look, which is fine. Um, the front of this this is a sixty foot wide frontage. And with the architectural details on east and west side, um, they're eating up 55.6, 55 and a half feet of it. That's a pretty wide section on a, lot, a large lot. Most of the houses in this neighborhood, new houses built don't um, are not as imposing. Um, that building is a bit more imposing because of the square nature of it. And in particular at the east corner, with the two foot additional architectural feature at ground level, it actually puts the building um, past the 1.8 meter setback on the east side. Uh, item, what is it? Item eight, the 30% uh, uh, coverage. Um, I would like to see that kept down as much as possible. If I did my math correctly, Taking all the setbacks into consideration, there's 2,500 square feet that they can build the house without approaching setbacks. So, even at even at the request of 30 percent, which is 1,909 square feet, there's 2,500 square feet on the lot that can place the building. Uh, respect the uh, designer in reducing the height and. My, I just have a clarification question on that. The section 12, they've reduced it to 9.26. Is that mid height of roof or is that the total just height the of the main building? wall height? The, the height of the overall height of the building complies with the bylaw, sir. Overall height. Um, so let me review my notes. Everyone's completed it, talked about it all before. Well, then not to be the dead horse. Thank you very much for your time and effort, uh, everyone. And um, if the uh, architect and owners would uh, talk to the neighbors ahead of time, that would have been a, a nice um, uh, thing to have and to start this out. I am done, thank you very much. Thank you, any questions of the speaker? Being none, I have one more speaker, Mary Finn, are you there? Hey. Mary Finn, are you there? Yes, I am. Madam, can I get your full name and address please? It's uh, 65 Norton Crescent. Okay, thank you, Madam. Mary Finn. Madam, if you could please uh, tell us. I don't really have. 
you give us your uh, comments on this application, please, but please don't tell us material we've already heard. Absolutely not. And I thank my neighbors and you people who have put in such a long day. Uh, I have nothing more to say. I just wish the architect had contacted the neighbors here as he did at 96 Dollish uh, Boulevard. Thank you. That's it. Okay, thank you, madam. And I, I take it you're opposed to the application. Yes, I am. Okay, thank For you. For all the reasons my neighbors have expressed. Okay, thank you. That's terrific. Thank you. Does the committee okay. have any questions of the speaker? Being none, we'll go back to the agent, Mr. Gassemi. Uh, sir, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You've heard the comments from the previous speakers. If you'd like to reply to them, please. Yes, um, Mr. Chair, I have to mention uh, I, uh, we had a discussion with my client that uh, we, uh, they should talk to the neighbors in the area. Given the current situation uh, conditions, they were really uncomfortable going to uh, each of the neighbors door and knock on the doors. They uh, just for the sake of everyone's safety and uh, they just weren't so comfortable and they asked me like what to do and I uh, couldn't help in, uh, uh, in any way. I tried and then we, we didn't know how to contact uh, the neighbors, but when we saw that uh, the issues raised with the uh, sidewall height, we tried to uh, uh, amend uh, the application and uh, make the improvements in order to reduce the overall impact of the proposal. Uh, I just want to uh, mention you mentioned that earlier, but if you can uh, bring this site plan up for that for uh, the neighbors so they can see um, our side yard setback on the west side is just for the small portion in the front of the dwelling, uh, just because the building is not a perfect uh, rectangle. Um, we have that we're seeking that variance for the front. This side yard setback in the rear of our dwelling is going to be 2.2.1 uh, meters. Uh, we don't have any uh, variances for for we don't have any side yard setback variance for the east side. The, the mainly our uh, variances are for the uh, the design of the facade, which is a modern uh, facade with, with some architectural elements uh, that. Uh, go beyond uh, that side yard setback. Um, I, I really think that this uh, um, RVS is minor in nature. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Uh, there being none, uh, just to uh, emphasize once again that there have been changes made to this application. Uh, variance number four has been revised. The proposed height of the main front walls was originally 9.17 meters. It's been reduced to 8.66 meters. In variance number five, the proposed height of the rear main walls is 9.17 meters, has been reduced to 8.48 meters. And under variance number 12, under the old North York bylaw, the proposed building height is 9.41 meters. That's been reduced to 9.26 meters. So if I could get a motion on this revised application, please. Ms. Sankar. Okay, through you, Mr. Chair, you know, I've listened really intently to all of the neighbors, the concerns that they've said. I've read the for the Councillor letter, et cetera, and I've heard what the rebuttal is that the applicant has uh, has um, shared with us. And even with the changes that were made here today, I still feel that this application um, is really too much. Um, and I don't think cumulatively as well as individually, the variances are minor even with the changes. And I'll motion to refuse this application. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Someone to second Ms. Sankar's motion. Mr. Hunt seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously, sir. I'm sorry, your application has been unanimously refused. Thank you very much. Item number 36. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Item number 36. 
32 Gilgorm Road. I have one person registered to speak. That's Ali Shakiri, yes, sir. Ali Shakiri, 326 Shepherd Avenue East. Yes, I, hello, sir. I yes, have, sir. Um, looking in your file, I see there were two reports from staff, uh, recommended condition from urban forestry. There's also a report from city planning dated the 9th of April. Uh, they're indicating they have no objection to your application provided that the property is developed substantially in accordance with the south and north side elevation drawings submitted to the committee as attachments one and two to their report. Uh, you have six variances before us. It's pretty clear what you're asking for. Um, I'll just ask, is there anything you'd like to add that isn't in the material that the committee has before it? No, sir, uh, nothing to add. Uh, happy to answer any question. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Hunt? Mr. Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would move approval of this application subject to the April 9th planning staff report, which suggests developing substantially in accordance with the south and north side elevation drawings submitted to the Committee of Adjustment, and the April 21st uh, uh, letter from Urban Forestry outlining their policy requirements. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hunt. Someone to second Mr. Hunt's motion? Mr. Kidd seconds. All those in favor? And motion carries. Uh, sir, your application has been unanimously approved, subject to city planning and urban forestry conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have item number 37, 91 Teddington Park Avenue. I have... Um, Mr. Chair and members, uh, just to bring to your attention, there are only two um, uh, uh, neighbors that are here on the call to speak, Anthony Belcher and Mary Elgin. Mary Ellen Horgan are, only, are the only ones that are present. Just a second, Mr. Wills. Anthony Belcher, is he the architect? No, he's an architect hired by a neighbor. Okay, all right. And uh, is there anybody else here who is not speaking today? Like I said, Anthony Belcher and then Mary Ellen Horgan are the only two present on the call. Okay. Okay, so the... Just again, Jack Radecki, Stephen Bent, Tara Bent, Andrew Durnford, none of them are present. Okay, thank you. Uh, item number 36, 32, uh, pardon me, item number 37, 91 Teddington Park. I have one, two, three people registered to speak. I have a uh, Hesem Rostami is the agent. Are you there, sir? Yes, I am here. Okay, thank you, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yeah, my name is Hassan Rostami from Rostami Natasha Atelier, and the address is 675 King Street West. Okay, thank you, sir. I, I note there's a couple of staff reports in your file. There's a recommended condition from Urban Forestry, and there's also a city planning report of the 21st of April of this year. They recommend modifying the application by reducing variance number three regarding the floor space index from 0 0.56 to 0 0.54 times the lot area and increasing variance number five regarding the east side yard setback from 1.2 meters to 1.5 meters. Are you proposing to introduce those revisions, sir? Yes, uh, um, before we move forward, in addition to those two, which was okay, a part sir, of okay. the- Before you start, can you go through your application and tell us which variance yes. pro yes. you're proposing to change? Yes, so variance number three, Regarding the FSI, we would like to reduce from 0.56 to 0.54. Okay, that's variance number three. Variance, yeah, that's variance number three. Variance number five regarding the east side yard setback. Okay. We want to increase increase that side yard setback from 1.2 to 1.5. Okay. And in addition to that, in consultation with, with the neighbors, specifically the neighbor, uh, the adjacent neighbor, 93 Teddington Avenue, um, um, Teddington Park Avenue, and their, and their architect, Anthony Pilcher, uh, we decided to actually reduce the height 
of the main wall from 8.15 to 7.95. Okay, and that's variance number six? Yes, that is correct. So from 8.15 to what? To 7.95. 7.95 meters. Yes, that's eight inches or uh, 0.2 meters. Okay, thank you. Uh, I know. I note that we have uh, two other persons registered to speak, sir. So if you'd like to give us a uh, brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your revised application. So first of all, I want to thank the the committee members and also the 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 staff at the committee, especially Adam Willis, because we have been going through talking to the neighbors in the last three weeks, and we have made some uh, revisions based on the. And my recommendations that came from that that decision, uh, we had um, objection letters from 93 Teddington Park, uh, Michael and Mary Ellen Morgan, uh, from uh, um, Stephen uh, Stephen and Tara Bent from 1765, which is just adjacent to us, south of us, and we had also objection letter from 133 Teddington and 120 Teddington, and a supporting letter from 150 Teddington. I'm just you know uh, I'm going to go through it very quickly now. Um, the um, Anthony Belcher, uh, the agent um, of the neighbors, reached out to us with their concerns. Uh, at the time, they were not um, in the country, so it was hard to actually talk to them. But my clients actually um, uh, and them um, managed to talk through the Zoom calls, and we have came to consent towards the consent. And uh, thankfully, after working with the arborist, their arborist, Jack Redeke, and uh, my arborist, uh, Kent Nielsen, uh, we have come to, an, uh, to a compromise in the design uh, that, uh, that would satisfy the requirement. In addition to that, my clients provided them with a letter that would oblige them to protect the cedar hedges, um, to the, the silver maple tree, and in the event that the silver maple tree dies, which is in their backyard, uh, they would compensate and help them uh, with removal of that of that tree. So um, all of that has been done throughout the last uh, week or so, and especially the last couple of days. Um, I'm going to go through my presentation very quickly. Uh, um, um, Adam, can you please uh, provide us with uh, correspondences dated April 27th? Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any yeah. questions? Oh, no, Mr. Chair. He he wants to do his presentation now. Very quickly, very quickly, Mr. Chair. Okay. The slide should be up now. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Adam. Thank you. Can you go to the letter, to actually letter? Scroll down, sorry. Sorry, Adam. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, scroll down, uh, Mr. Bills. It's coming, it's, it, it'll, it'll just take Oh, a sorry, time. I know, I know, I'm sorry. Okay, the first two, the first two variances are regarding the, the side yard setback from the Mount Pleasant. It is only by, you're asking for 0.35 meter of the setback of the, of the, um, of the platform, because by law, if, if it is a butting a street, uh, we are allowed to encroach into the three meter setback by 1.5. Can you go to the next page? Those are the areas that I'm showing in, in green on the top. The bottom actually shows the neighborhood, and you can see these three houses, which is 91, 93, and 95 Teddington, are the only ones that are really smaller than the other neighbors. So the, the lot frontage requirement for the area is 22 meters, whereas these three lots are only 15 or 15.2 meters. Um, and that's one of the reasons that with a certain uh, dimension of a house or an area of a house, it would um, result in a, in a larger FSI for the, for the house. Can you go to the next page? So here I'm just showing you the with red dotted line, the extent of the existing house, the garage um, with, with access from Mount Pleasant and the, the connecting structure existing. And you can see that it is only four inches from the property line on the Mount Pleasant side, and it is only 0.7 meters from the east side, uh, which would be the 93 Teddington Park neighbor on the, on the east side. Sorry, the other one was the west side. So what we're proposing is to actually increase the, the east and west side setback by quite a bit, from four inch to four feet, and from, uh, uh, from only 0.7 meters to 1.5 meter with the revised plan. Can you go to the next one? So these are 
These are the examples of the neighborhood and the, along, the, along the Mount Pleasant side. So you can see that the corner lots, um, if you, I didn't have access to the property line information of these properties, but you can see from the, from the edge of the, the inside edge of the, the, the sidewalk, you only have two meters set back for, less than two meters set back for these properties. But if you go, if, if you go back to my slide, uh, one, one page before this, Sir, can you summarize that area of attention? Yes, can you summarize? yes, yes. So that, yes, yes. So um, uh, what I'm trying to say is that we have we have revised the application to actually be. Can you go two pages down, Adam? We have revised the application to actually be um, six feet less wide than uh, what it is standing right now there, and uh, we have changed. Sorry, this is a. Okay, this thank is you, sir. I have to regarding. cut you off. You're five minutes. Okay. Ago. Yeah. Sure. Thank sure. you. We'll go to the next person we have. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Go to the next speaker on our list. I have Anthony Belcher. Are you there, sir? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Can I get your full name and address, please? Anthony Belcher, 900 Young Street, Suite 504, Toronto. Okay, thank you, sir. If you'd like to give us uh, your thoughts on this revised application. Okay, I've been acting for the neighbors who live in the house immediately to the east, Mr. and Mrs. Horgan, and uh, there have been concerns that they had about the height of the building, the proposed house, and the protection of their large silver maple in their backyard. Um, we've come to a, a a settlement with the with the applicant, and it's subject to some conditions. And I understand that the architect uh, has submitted revised site plan and revised elevation drawings. And we would ask that those be tied to any decision that the committee makes this afternoon. And also that a tree protection plan drawing was also submitted and that, that be tied to your decision as well. Okay. So perhaps Adam Wills can help us with that. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, and uh, so we, we understand that variances uh, number three Five and six are all being revised as the architect has just described. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Being none, we'll go to our uh, last speakers on the list. I have Mary Helen Horgan and Michael Horgan. Mary hello. Ellen Horgan and Michael Horgan. Yes, hello. Yes, hello. Can I get your full name and address, please? Mary Ellen Horgan, 93 Teddington Park Avenue. Okay, thank you, madam. If you could give us your thoughts on this application. Uh, as, as Mr. Belcher explained, uh, we have come to an agreement with our neighbor, um, hoping rather, yeah, with, we have no objections provided that the assurances they have given us with respect to the variances um, are complete, we're in agreement. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you have any other, uh, so you're, you're basically okay with the revised application? Yes, we are. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Okay, thank you. We'll go back to Mr. Rustami. Are you there, sir? I am here. Yes, I am here. You heard the comments from Mr. Belcher and uh, and the Horgans. Yes. So I'm sorry because I didn't have time. I couldn't actually add those uh, drawings. Uh, Adam, can you please um, upload the correspondences to to the committee dated today that I've sent this morning, twenty eighth of April. Stand by. Yeah, I, we're going to bring them up here in a moment for you. That's okay. Thank you. Mr. Chair, um, this is this is the 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 three uh, documents that my colleague uh, Anthony Pulcher uh, rightfully um, asked me to send to the committee this morning. Go to the second page. Sorry, um, this is the letter from the neighbors showing that they're in consent. Um, I've sent you another um, document that had three um, three drawings, one site plan, one. Tree protection plan and one elevation. 
we're going to dig that one up next. Thank you. I'm sorry, members of the committee. It's been a long day for all of us. Mr. Rostami, it should be on the screen now. Yes. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. So, can you go to the next page, please? Yes. So this is the so the way that we have done it is that we have changed the the access to the walkout to the basement and the stairs completely outside of the tree protection zone. We have moved the pool completely away from the tree, and with the increased setback and reduced um, footprint of the house um, and the arborist report, uh, we are confident that we can carry out this plan without um, killing the tree. Go to the next page. This is the tree protection plan that I have provided the arborist and he has actually provided us with a report that has been shared with the architect and the neighbor. Can you go to the next page? This is the elevation that the architect and I has agreed on, which brings the whole building down by eight inches or 0.2. Uh, meters as re revised on the application. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, just to uh, emphasize this application has been revised. Variance number three, the proposed floor space index has been reduced from 0.56 FSI to 0.54. Variance number five, which is the proposed east side yard setback, has been increased from 1.20 meters to 1.50. And variance number six, the proposed height of the side exterior main walls facing a side lot line is 8.15 meters. That has been uh, reduced to 7.95 meters. So all those uh, changes satisfy the planning conditions exceed the planning conditions. So if I could get a motion on this application, please. Ms. Sankar? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair, I think with the changes made, um, I'm satisfied that this uh, application meets the four tests. So I'll motion to approve the application with the changes uh, that were made and that you've announced here as well today, Mr. Chair, and this will be subject to forestry. Thank you Thank very you. much, Ms. Sankar. Mr. Uh, Hunt seconds, all those in favor? Motion carries. Sir, your revised application has been approved subject to urban forestry conditions. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Thank you. We're now on to item number 39, 119 Burbank Drive. No, item 39 is 135 St. Leonard's Avenue. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was item, yeah, 38. item 38. <laughs> item 38, 90 Stratford Avenue. Thank you very much. I have two people registered to speak. I have the agent, Lauren Rose. Are you there, sir? Y yes, I am. Yes, Mr. Rose, I have uh, noticed on your file we have a planning report dated the 21st mm -hmm. of April of this year. They're recommending increasing variance number eight, which is the rear yard setback from 5.23 meters to 6.6 meters, and that the front yard setback be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan drawing attached to this report. Have you had a chance to see that report, sir? I have indeed. <laughs> okay, and there's also a report from Ravine and Natural Features Protection dated the 21st of April, and they have recommended conditions. So if, mm -hmm. uh, with respect to the city planning report, sir, were you proposing to make modifications to your application? 
I cannot. You do not. Okay, thank you. If you could uh, give the committee a presentation on what you see are the merits of your proposal and specifically the issues with identified by city planning. Sure. Um, if I could ask Adam to put up the site plan, please. And then I will ask you to put up the area plan, Adam, after if you can do that. Uh, so the site plan is up. Um, okay, so uh, this is an application that has been um, modified. Uh, I don't think this is the right one, Adam. Is that? Uh, well, I'm going to see what the report shows. Oh, no, that is the right one. That's fine. That's fine. Um, so um, this application was deferred because planning asked us to line up the houses, uh, line up the house with number 88. Um, so we agreed, but what that did was it created a rear yard setback that was less than what we had before. We were more in compliance with what they were asking. Um, so we deferred and they, they asked us to defer right before the hearing, which was really unfair. And, and it keeps happening where planning doesn't look at the application until right before. So we agreed because we thought we had a deal. Then, right before this hearing was being mailed out, they finally got back to me and said, no, we don't, we want a better rear yard setback. Um, so, what I'd like to show you is, is the shape of this lot is really crazy. In fact, the driveway that planning had us do is, is an awful driveway. Um, it bends crazy and it's coming in front of the next door neighbor. I want to point out that the next door neighbor has a 4.58 rear yard setback. So I'm not sure why 5.41 isn't good enough. It's a very shallow lot. If Adam could pull up the area plan, that would be great. Um, Adam, can you zoom in at all? Um, so you can see the next door neighbor to the north of this lot. That's the one that has the really small setback. What I just realized a few days ago is that our survey doesn't actually show this correct. If you look at Google Earth, um, we show just a point touching, uh, getting it at 4.58 or whatever. The whole back is, is actually, the, the, the city map is correct. So uh, I guess if you go back to, um, to my site plan, um, by pushing the house back, we reduce the side yard setback. It's an odd shaped lot. The, the compound curve on the front is, um, is making this an odd front yard setback. Um, we've done everything they asked. And then at the last minute, they said, no, we want it to be six feet, which isn't necessarily appropriate when the next door neighbor has a much smaller rear yard setback. That's all I can say. We, we did everything they asked. We reduced the density, the coverage, sorry. We, we pushed the house back. It's not a big house for this neighborhood. The house next door at number 92 is massive. Uh, this is in keeping with development. Um, and you can see that our setback, uh, the rear setback is on a line here. That's all I have to say. I think it's in keeping with development in the area. Um, so I can answer any questions if you have. Mr. Rose is, is I'm, I'm just, I couldn't get a, a real look at the back of the property when I was there, but it looks like it's very heavily landscaped with. Yes, it is. It's tree. Pretty, it doesn't look like you can see the, you don't get a good view of the, of the backyard of the abutting westerly property. No, you don't. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, I have any questions of the speaker. Mr. Kidd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Rose, I'm, I'm just looking at your site plan here. Uh, I can't make out the figure that shows the uh, rear setback to the, what, what looks like it's probably the, the, the main portion of the wall. There's, there's a jog that, that, that the- uh, Right. Um, what's what's the, the rear setback to the, to the main corners of the house? The main part, not, not the closest point? Not the, not the closest 
point, but the the outside corners. Uh, uh, hold on. Um, I will get that for you. It appears I had the, the, we, we, we had so many site plans that I actually had the wrong one up. So uh, I, I will get that for you. Is there someone okay, else who okay, is going fine. to talk? Okay, thank you. Is somebody else talking? Uh, Mr. Chair, while Lauren uh, searches for the site plan he likes oh. that like wish to share with us, which he'll email to me, um, we can maybe have yes. Lutz full graph. Speaker. You have the right site plan. I just didn't have it. Oh, right. Is Mr. Rose there? The Mr. Rose, yes. will, you, will you be able to answer Mr. Kidd's question then in this moment? Yeah. Sorry, I thought there was somebody else who wanted to speak. I apologize. No, no, uh, Mr. Kidd. Rose, if you can. Uh, can you, can you get back to it's an extra point six it's an extra point six meters so i don't unfortunately i, I had another version of the setback so if we're at five point um two three we're at five point eight three for the that, that other corner thank you okay thank you uh We'll go to the next person on the list. I have Lutz Fulgraf. Are you there, sir? Uh, Lutz Fulgraf, uh, I'm speaking for Lawrence Park Ratepayers Association, 3219 Young Street, Box 239. Um, I realize that uh, the, the lot is really oddly shaped, and uh, I'm sure that's a challenge for everyone who wants to put up a house there. Um, however, the, the uh, City's request for an increased uh, rear yard setback seemed to be very moderate uh, in uh, in light of the fact that usually the bylaws ask for a 7.5 meter setback. Uh, I'm a little disappointed that that cannot be accommodated apparently, and therefore I do object to uh, the request for the reduced side yard setback. That's really all I have to say in the interest of time because you, it's late for all of you. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Mr. Rose, is there anything you'd like to say in response to Mr. Fulgraf's comments? I wish that we would not have lined up the houses at the front because I think there's a better argument for with the curved street that uh, we, we had the house angled and the rear yard setback was a lot bigger. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed that planning you know, let us down this route and then it was too late to change. I was given one about a half hour to say either defer again or not. If you can look at, at my site plan, the biggest problem is if I were to extend my driveway out straight, um, I would be right over top of the next door neighbor's property. And when I had it angled more, uh, the other way, it was a better driveway, but this is what planning asked for. So this is not a big house for this lot compared to what's built on the street. And yes, I, I you know, it's rare that I would ever ask for that, but as much as um, front yards are supposed to line up, uh, I, the planning department's also supposed to look at, consider that rear yards. And if the next door neighbor's at 4.6, uh, and I'm at close to six meters for the most of the house, just the one little bump out, I'm at 5.41. Um, I think you have to take that into consideration and in terms of does it meet the four tests that it does. It actually is a, a transition from uh, 88 to 92. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Did I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Kidd? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, I think that uh, given the uh, uh, un -nature, uh, 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 unusual uh, uh, shape of the lot, uh, I think this is a fairly good compromise in, in terms of, of, of citing uh, 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 a, a, a difficult situation. I'm going to put forward a motion to accept the application uh, subject to the uh, planning staff condition that the front yard setback be developed substantially in accordance with a site plan drawing uh, attached to the report. Okay, thank you. And there's also a ravine and natural features protection. 
condition. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Sanker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Ms. Sanker seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries. Thank you. So your application's been approved subject to city planning and uh, ravine and natural features protection conditions. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. We're on item number 39. Pardon me. Item 39 was deferred. Uh, we are on item number 40, 119 Burbank Drive. I have, hang on. Bear with me, my computer is just. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, member of the committee. My name is Mehran Haydari, 1019 Diamonds Road, 3506, North Circle, Ontario. Hang on. My computer is just frozen Thank up. You. Hang on. If you'd like one of us to proceed and help you out, please let uh, us know. Just a moment, Ms. Sanker. I've, it looks like I'm, I'm just getting it back up now. Hang on, just bear with me. Item number 40, 119 Burbank Drive. I have one person registered to speak that is uh, moran hadari are you there uh yes sir yes sir i just want to ask i'm just looking at your file here i note there are two reports from city staff there's one from toronto region conservation authority dated the 21st of april they have no objections to your application there's also one from city planning dated the 21st of april uh, 2021, they have no objections, provided that the main wall height is developed substantially in accordance with the east and west side elevation drawings attached to this report. Just want to ask her if you had the opportunity to read both those reports. Yes, of course, and I'm happy with the reports, yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Pretty clear what you're asking for in the, uh, the variances that are before us. I think it's, uh, uh, they're pretty straightforward. I'll just ask, is there anything that you'd like to add uh, to, or tell the committee that it's contained in the material that we have before us this afternoon? Uh, just uh, for uh, record of the conversation with the councillor, so I send a drawing to councillor based on the conversation about affecting the development in the rear yard uh, because of the deck, because the deck variance that they have the concern and we uh, propose the drawing to provide the construction document to build the deck with the just helical pile in the corner and the steel beam supporting on the corner of the deck to reduce the negative impact of the construction on the soil. Okay, thank you, sir. I'll, I'll just ask the committee, does it have any questions of the speaker? There being none, can I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, based on the documents before me, uh, I will move approval of this application subject to the condition from the planning staff that the main wall height be developed in accordance with the east and west side elevations attached to their report. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Someone to second that motion. Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? Motion carries unanimously, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved subject to city planning conditions. Thank you very much, sir, and thank you for waiting. Thank you so much. Good evening. Thank you. Can I get a motion to terminate? That's Mr. Hunt. Motion to I, terminate. I second that motion. We're done. Thank you so much, folks. It's been a long day. Have a good evening. Yeah.